County Junior A Hauling Championship is one of the most prestigious in the Limerick GA calendar year. This is due to the fact that over 20 teams compete in this competition, starting out in April. It's played on a divisional basis with the winners and runners-up going through to the county quarterfinals. Hauling people will tell you that the Junior Championship is the hardest and one of the most difficult to win. This year's final brought together Drummond at Lacca from the south and Eskeaton, the surprise team in the west. During the week, the atmosphere in Eskeaton was so great that we decided to go out to Eskeaton to see if we could capture some of that electrifying atmosphere. There are maidens fair in the county Limerick, from Tuna Fuller to Capamore. I have seen red jewels in old Kildimo and in Palace Kenry by Ring Mile and Shores. I have seen great ladies of pomp and fashion with scarlet cloaks and with silken gowns. They are sweet and fair, but they can't compare with the girl I met in a skeeton town. I met a girl in Shanna Golden, I courted her all the summer through. Ah, but when I saw the swallows leaving, I tied my bundle and I left too. I spent a winter in Templed Lantern, with a Thatcher's daughter, she was young and gay. And I swear I loved her till the day I left her, and I kissed a girl from sweet Ate. I rambled on to Carrick Kerry and to sweet Kel Coleman when the leaves were brown, down to Creves and Ballycullen, till at last I came to Westgaten Town. As sure t'was there I met her, I'll ne'er forget her. Her hair was softer than the thistle down. Now she's mine forever, and I leave her never. The maid I met in a skeeton town. Here now we have Fancy Kinney, chairman of the Skeeton Club, farmer, holler, and footballer at Skeeton in Bellisty. And Fancy, what a year to be chairman of the club. Uh, well, it's was John. I was lucky. <laughs> uh, last couple of years, I was chairman and nothing happened. We, we, we thought we'd make it into football on a few occasions, and we didn't. And I suppose, this, uh, last February, we started training for the football. And it's uh, lucky as it is now. If we, won, if, we, if we had beaten every fail behind in Newcastle, we wouldn't be where we are today. Because we have in a playoff, and it was the following Sunday, we started hurling against Temple Denton. And we barely scraped 15, I think. Uh, we were going around trying to get them. And we got over that then. We went from there, from strength to strength, and the support started to come behind us then. Now we have great support. Uh, our chances, I suppose, we have a 50-50 chance, John, I suppose. That's what we have, like. And you find there's a 50-50 chance. On the day, it all happens. And uh, I wouldn't have much more. I wouldn't say much more. Like, I, I'd wait for tomorrow evening for, 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 to, for, say for to say any more. Yeah, well, I suppose, Fancy, as you say, if, if every field had beaten you, you might be county senior champions well, now, and you'd be following the bagels. Th that's right. probably, actually, John, I was just going away hunting when you came on. Oh, yeah. I, was going back to the, <laughs> I was going back to the county hounds. Peggy Kinney, secretary of the local club, and Peggy, down through the years, and I suppose we we got a glimpse of another lady earlier on over there in the square, May Collins, who was very involved with the Eskeaton Club in the early days. But Peggy, this is a proud moment for you. You're the secretary, Francie is the chairman. You'd have two sons playing, only one of them is injured. I suppose you're happy, Peggy, and shaking at the same time. Definitely, John, full of nerves, of course, like all the rest. And uh, just hope and pray that they can win tomorrow. It should be a great boost to the town and to all the ones that are involved all up through the years. It is so long since it has been won, John. Well, we're praying for a win tomorrow, thank God. And as Anthony Daly said for clear, yes, they're playing for everyone that ever wore oh, a mosquito jersey. jersey. Exactly, yes. And Peggy, would you let me into a secret now? Because I believe that you don't go to a lot of the matches, especially the finals, that you stay at home making the grub for the boys. Is that true? I do, and biting my nails, John. And are you going tomorrow, Peggy? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not, John. Couldn't you get yes. in a few nuns or something tomorrow to make the tea? I could, but my nerves wouldn't let me go tomorrow so now. So you'll be here ready to put up the, the banners the and banners, light the bonfires? With the help of God, yes. With lightly shine, Captain. And how do you think they'll do, John? 
I think they'll win. Now Vincent Gallagher, the manager of the Skeeton Holland team. Vincent, are you coming up for a look at the field or are you just driving around, passing away the time until tomorrow? To tell you the truth, John, I'm going with a few greyhounds now to Newcastle and I'm in an awful hurry. <laughs> and are, I, the, are, I, the, are the Skeeton team as fit as the greyhounds? Hopefully they'll be as fast anyway. They'll and be as if fast. The greyhounds are as fast as the team, I'll be doing very well. And uh, you, how do you think you're going to do tomorrow, Vincent? Um, I think if we play well, we'll win seven or eight points. If we play bad, it will be tight. Tom Corrigan, who is managing director of Corrigan and Griffin Company, who are the sponsors of the men of the match tomorrow. Tom, how do you think he's going to go? <coughs> I think Skeeton will win the match, provided they keep their mouth shut and play away, keep on the ball, and if they don't give any back chat to the referee, they'll have no problems at all. I think they'll win five or six points. Did you always keep your mouth shut when you were playing, Tommy? Not always, no, then, but most of the time. Would you give them a great chance, Tom? They have a great chance, yeah. More than a 50-50 chance. Oh, what chance do you give the boys tomorrow, Eamon? I give the chance boys a uh, better than a 50-50 chance. I think they have some really skilled hurlers. They're and a surprise team of the year, of course. The surprise team of the year, definitely, yeah. And now we have Michael Sheehan of the corner shop and top of the town, Sheehan Brothers in Eskaton, and a great supporter and a great man for putting money and minerals at the disposal of the young fellas up along the line because Michael has seen these lads since they were 10 and 12 and finally Michael they've reached the summit now and they're going to the Junior A county final tomorrow. What chance do you give them? I give them a great chance. I think they should win easy. You think they should win easy Mike? Yeah. What, what, what do you base that on? In the last few games I've seen them playing they were very good and they're improving in every game. The boys in the county Junior oh, yeah. A holding There's final. There's no doubt about that. Proud there, uh, proud there for the parish and the club. And I have no doubt they'll win it, because the last time we won it, there was a lot of families involved, the Hackett's, the Kinellis. Now we have the Berries, the Lions, the Kinnies, the Nevilles. So, like, the, the spirit is there, like, and I think there's no doubt who will win it. And only at the start of the year, I suppose, they were like clear. You could have got 100 to 1 in them. You could, I remember, even at a meeting. We had three meetings before they decided they were arguing. Half of them wanted to stand in. Joan or B, they couldn't have won that, and more of them said they wouldn't progress if they didn't go to a higher standard, and they were right. They went up and they proved now they're in it today. So are, are you fairly confident? Small, yeah, confident. Yeah. I think we'll win it anyway, what I saw him last week. Right, are you just checking the young brother out now for a spin in case you won't see him for a week? Is that it? <laughs> yeah? yeah that's Best of luck tomorrow, Sean Oak. Paddy, you remember a lot of the lads that won the championship six years ago? Yeah, they do, sure. Why wouldn't they? With, with uh, every match they played, so. And there's very few yeah. of them left now, Paddy? Very few of them left. Very few. They'd all love to be here tomorrow. They would, wouldn't they? We'll get them all back and, and put them in <laughs> oh, a bus. Oh, well, if Jimmy McKnight, anyway, sure. He's, help the, the, he's the old stalwart. The old, and Paddy, you were telling me there that uh, you remember the time there was a hauling team in Ballystine oh, as well? I think we called them the Lodge Rangers. Were they tough? Toughest you ever met. Oh, Pulled back from nothing. Pulled, a bit like the present crop. <laughs> I hope, that, no, there's enough fire in the present crop. Do you think so, Paddy? I'd like another bit of it. Another bit? But yeah. Maybe tomorrow they might turn on that fire. <laughs> we'll have to have a chat at them. Yeah. <laughs> we were over Paddy in the on. credit union window. It's a credit to the way you have it done up. It's nice, I like it. And he put up the blue colours as well, like for it lacquer. Oh, it does. Made great strides. We won the Jonah B back in, I think it was 1989, was it? Five or six years ago. And little did we think then that we would be playing the Jonah A final six years later. So it's marvellous. Really great, and uh, I wish them all the very best. And I'm especially myself because my father, now Jack Gallagher, I think, was a member of the last right. team in that race. Six so years ago. Yeah. Myself and Roseanne have a special interest in it. Like so, we're really hoping this, the long wait will be over tomorrow. Here now we have Shawnee Baron. Shawnee for the All Ireland final, a men's cycle from Clare to Dublin. Are you going to cycle to Ballingarry tomorrow to see the boys win? It would make my first time. It wouldn't be your first no, time. It would be my first and you probably time. played after cycling there before. Definitely did. Definitely did. And I lost the development of my bicycle and tell anyone thing by to walk halfway into Bellingary. You rode it flat. Rode it flat. It was only flat at the bottom, to see. Yes. Yeah. Just had it. You top. have a young fellow now and he's not too flat inside and oh goals. Oh my god, it is not by pure power, can be by pure power. Did he bring it from his grandfather or the parcels? All over, by it is it is bred in him from both sides. You bred in him? Yeah, both and sides. Is, and from the kidneys and the other side. And the kidneys from the other side. Oh should have powerful boys. So powerful Shani, you give the boys a great chance tomorrow. Oh should they have a one already though so I'd say the power that like they'll 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 bait them out to get. Do you think so? I say so. You're very confident, Shani. Oh, did you? The same training there, but I tell you one thing that 
They're like rockets, flyers. You weren't in the top of the town already this morning, were you, Sean? No, 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 no. no. So you're drink. fairly confident they're going to win? I didn't drink all the week now until the tooth, but I have a pint uh, uh, you know, I don't drink off the cup now until tomorrow evening, for God. So you'll begin the Killarney tomorrow, Sean? Oh, Killarney will be roaring and shouting by above the field. I live in a place to myself, because the normal stand alongside me, a woeful voice, roaring and shouting. As short as there I met her, I'll never forget her. Her hair was softer than the thistle down. Now she's mine forever, and I leave her never. The maid I met in the Skeeton town. Come on, Skeeton. After our visit to Skeeton, we headed southwards towards Drummond at Lacca. When we arrived there, we found the village all done up in the blue and white of Drummond at Lacca. We even saw a man up the pole hanging flags. We had various discussions with people involved with the J up there in Drummond at Lacca, and one of the first people we met was Cord Benny Lynchig, who sang a beautiful song all about Drummond at Lacca. This one was written by her husband, Padraig Olinchig. There's a spot in old Ireland where my heart longs to be. Just a small village crossroad between Brough and Brewery. Oh, it is called Sweet at Lacquer and brings back memories of my childhood and homeland. I now shed bitter tears. Last night I was dreaming. Twas in Camden Town. I dreamed that I was back to where the Galtees looked down and all my old neighbors and friends from the past shall they all made me welcome saying you've come home at last then my footsteps they led me to red cannon so high where i saw the old places i roamed as a boy Knocked to Bell and Lee, and the carcass so fair, famed Clohart, Glen Maboys, and sweet ancient Clare. I saw Drummond on high then, for her out in Maidstown, and that lacquer looked splendid as the sun it went down. Sure, I saw the old churchyard where my forefathers lie. There I hope that they'll lay me when the Lord calls from high. I viewed old Clondrine, Eureka, Raymond's town, Court Island, Crocryal, and Drumbeg of renown. Tell her boy, Bell and a stoner, to the north lies sweet green. Clowny had a cool boy, with our pastures so green. Then my grand dream it vanished, the landlady called. I awoke here in London, far away from it all, to the noise and the traffic. The smoke and the smog, how I longed for old Ireland with its high peaks and bogs. Now all you fair maidens and young men loyal and true, don't forget your own best place, whatever else you may do. Old Ireland, I miss you, so that's why I'm going back. To the best place in Ireland, that's Drummond Alack. We're here now in the hauling pitch in Drummond, where we are joined by Padraig Lynch, father of the goalkeeper James Lynch. Padraig, a great day for Drummond at Lacca tomorrow. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. To get to a county final is a great achievement, always, isn't it? Especially for a, you know, we'd consider ourselves a small rural parish now, you know. It'll be a great boost to win it. But to get there even is a terrible achievement, yes, you yes, know. Uh, what kind of success? You've never before won the junior championship, would you never won the, the junior. We went to the county final in 71. Mondelian beat us that day in Kilmarnock, four points, you know. And uh, 
bloody big disappointment that time, of course, you know. But since then, they have won, they have got the two county finals minor and for London football the one year, 1971 or two, I wouldn't be sure now. Our memory is slipping with me. But uh, they won the intermediate as well, of course. Basically, and won the final and came on as just before Christmas on them. And won the under 21. Now, they have won a few underage things. Uh, they have won an under 14 football title there, a school title there, which they they never before won, you know. Uh, had a certain amount of success. Could have had more, I think, only. Hard luck and injuries and, you know, success here meant a terrible thing. People will start grabbing mad here in 71 when they won the South title, you know, uh, playing neighbours Rory, you know, that was a terrible achievement, you know, the rank outsiders, the whole parish went mad. It was worse than one in all Ireland in 73, you know. Does. Yeah. Of course, Better, of the course. fact that you opened the, the new pitch here in 1990 was it between Limerick and Watford, that, that was a great boost to the that, area That was as a well, great boost, sure, in Philly there, of course, one of the big men that went to American authorised funds, we we'll walk from Turles, Hayes' Hotel in Turles, sponsored walk. And uh, before that, up in Jacksfield, there, you know, where you take off your clothes by the side of the ditch, and maybe there'd be cold on one of my rain during the match. I'm sure that happened everywhere. It is, these it things is. now, these stadiums here now are great, and, and just paid for and all that. Sure. It did. And on the way up here, we, 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 on the way from Rory, we passed the Valera's house back to Rodder. I suppose That's right. he was often in this parish as a young fellow. <coughs> God, he was here. Mine covers above there in Clanbrine, just up here, half a mile up the road there, for his grandfather. Uh, old Pat Cole, and, and, and uh, he pulled up the state car there one day and he knocked at the house, Mrs. Hennessy. Did you know that, Phil? And he said, could he sit in the chair or he sat and he mind in the cold by the fire? So he sat there for five minutes or so and spoke away to him. And his uncle, his cousin was living back at the road in Pat Cole. Oh, he was here at Mass several times in, you know, he's come in. He come on, came on a few occasions, he should visit him, the cousin, you know. Good. And what chance would you give the boys now tomorrow in the county final against uh, Well, I suppose it's all very fine. I hear fellas soccer you now. Ah, uh, uh, Estgaten will win easy. Estgaten are no good. Our fellas are great and our fellas are up and down. But any team that gets to a county final has to be respected. And I haven't seen Estgaten playing, as I say, or I haven't seen these lads. But uh, let me say that that's a 50 50 chance on the day. So our lads now weren't they leading Chrome now in, in the south final, a big lead. They lost to draw and they were beaten a pint in the replay. But they got it together then against Doon, you know, that's that's and got it together the last day and if they get it together tomorrow I think they have, you know, an excellent And if chance. the weather holds up we'll have oh, a great track. Be great shot. I like for both of the teams as like we said he's too easy. It will be a great day for the winners anyway. Sure and the losers. And the, losers, yes, and of the course, losers, yes, of course. And will there be anybody left in the parish at all tomorrow? Very, very few. But don't you see all the flags that are there and everything like that, you know? Now, the, the strange thing about it this year, uh, what, what was gone for a long time, you see, you'll be there after Massive Sunday, the Cranberry's gone, of course. There after Massive Sunday, no word about Holland. But this year it has been spoken, the boys are out today, and such a one is sick, and such a fellow played great. And once you hear that going on, once you hear the public talking, yeah. Once you hear the bit of interest, it's great. You'll get a bit of a holly coming down from the altar nearly. Right. They are very near it, very near it. You, you'll hear about it anyway. Oh, you would, yeah. It's great, yeah. So you're looking forward to a big week in that black Oh, looking for winner lows, I suppose. To be. We, hear that, we hear they have big things laid on for tomorrow night, winner lows. Uh, it has been kept kind of private as far as what I believe that is. The be secret party. celebrations anyway. And I know fellas know that drinks, you know, a few pints and things. Some of the fellas that are long. You know, they haven't touched the drop, I suppose, for the last three or four weeks, and a lot of them have a lot of weight, lost a lot of heart training. Nearly pinned the of course, is doing a great job. Oh, so he was a great He was a great hurler himself. himself. Fine, God, he was. Very genuine, so, no matter who wins, anyway, I, I, I'm sure that both clubs will visit each other over the winter. Oh, surely, surely. And, and let me say, of course, the men in charge are doing a great job, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure the same yeah. is getting out. I mean, it has hard slog on them. They're getting a lot of abuse. I mean, in charge of teams, they're getting a lot of abuse. They're doing the wrong thing. and they're not. We're all great outside in the sideline. We can pick teams, no, can't we? Can. And train yeah. them. Mm -hmm. But, but... Uh, well, as good, good as your last match. Yes, yes, as good as your Especially last Especially the one you won. Like. Oh, the one you won. There's no bad man that day. There's no, <laughs> no bad no, man no, that day. No, no. There's no lose. They're all bad, you know. That is the way. Thanks uh, very much, right. Patrick. Good, good man. Heart. I believe your daddy is playing, see? Yeah. What's his name? Mike Moynihan. And how does Daddy feel about tomorrow's game? Uh, excited. Excited? Yeah. Hoping for a win? Yeah. Yeah. And over here we have the... You're the daughter of the team manager, Paddy Holly, is that right? Yeah. And your own name is? Idel Hurley. Idel Hurley. Yeah. Did he sleep last night today? Very little, I'd say. Very little? Yeah. Yeah. Making sure that everything is right for the final? Yeah, definitely. And uh, how do you think they're going to do? They're going to win. Right, with us here now we have the secretary of the Drummond at Lackey Club, Paddy Holly, and I suppose what's more importantly this year, the team manager of the Drummond at Lackey team who will play a skating in the county final tomorrow. Paddy, I suppose you're a bit nervous at this stage, are you? 
it's why we do butterflies now general in the, the snook and things like that but come Sunday we hope everything will be okay you have the lads in good shape ah yeah done great shape you know uh, with our final training session there you now 2008 and everything everything is okay you know no injury problems or anything Paddy. a few niggling ones but like nothing yeah. no, nothing major like they'll all be right on the day yeah hopefully on the day john yeah you're fairly confident Paddy. you've never won the junior championship before no we've never won the junior championship we got to the final in 71 we were beaten by Mona then but we won the intermediate in 1977 we beat them all and how do you think it'll go for you tomorrow Paddy? um where do you see your strengths, or have you seen Eskate, and where do you think they are stronger? Um, I've seen Eskate and play at home in the county semi-final. Um, they, look, they look a big, strong team, you know what I mean? And really, this, you know, the typical junior team, you know what I mean? Um, our strengths, well, I think we'll have to play as a unit, you know, everything going together, you know what I mean? Um, we can't afford to have any weaklings on the day, you know? So Paddy, no matter who wins tomorrow, I'm sure that there's, there's going to be great nights ahead anyway in Drummond at Black and in Eskate. Oh yes, I hope so, John. It is. You know, it's it, it's great to get to a final, you know, but there's only, there's only two teams that can ever get to a final in any competition, you know, so we make the best of it. This is this is, this is is what we we were planning for over the last couple of years and now we're there. We're 60 minutes away from it, so with a bit of luck, we should do it. Now we're here in the <coughs> bridge in Atlaka and with me we have Mike Leary, who is a former star player with Drummond at Lacta Club. He won intermediate and under-21s in the South Senior with the club in 1980. Mike, you retired a couple of years ago, and your first year as chairman, and you're into the county junior A final against Eskaten tomorrow. A great day for the club. That's right, and a great day, and a great day for me as chairman. First year being chairman, and to get into the county final, it is a great honour for me, John. Yep. Uh, you have, you're amalgamated with... Uh, ben Og. Ben Og, this year, Mike. Yeah, our neighbours, Ben Og. They have um, three on the team, and they have a uh, good few subs as well. Um, we <coughs> down the years, numbers has beaten us, John, you know. So we had to amalgamate with Ben Og, otherwise we wouldn't be able to field the team. It's as okay. simple as that. And the bikes <coughs> are in good condition? And They're in great order, John, I think, yeah. They are fairly yeah. fit. Fully fit, I hope. Fully fit, yeah. yeah. You were be beaten at the semi-final stage last year, were you by Crewe? No, by Belly Bricken. By Belly Bricken. And they went on to win the county. Oh, that's right. That's and right. they were only beaten in the intermediate final this year by a point. So, it is all looking... Signs looking good. Looking good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have a mixture of youth and experience. We have. We have a couple of old fellas and a couple of young fellas. And they're blending in well. We have the two minor hands and... That Uncle Mike, of course, is playing, which is, it could be a record, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got a goal in a point last under for us. He played very well, yeah. That, the good blend there. And this beautiful banner that we see behind us, Mike, when we arrived in the village, was up in your front garden. So yeah. hopefully you're going to leave it there until Christmas. Oh, two Christmases, John, if we've been tomorrow. Two Christmases, <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be looking forward to the Intermediate Championship next year. It certainly will, yeah. Mike, well, yeah. we'd like to wish you the best of luck, win or lose tomorrow, and I'm sure that the Skid and Drummond and Atlaka, they'll have a great sporting game tomorrow in Ballingas. Yeah, I hope so, John. The two years. And yeah, I suppose you'll all be rooting for your neighbours. Cork and Moore Rovers, we will, of course. So they're only two or three miles down the road from us. And the Skid and Crow will be doing likewise for their neighbours, Kappa. They will, of course. Yeah. They'll be great rivalry tomorrow. Thanks very much, Mike. We're here now with Father Erwin, parish priest of Drummond at Lacca. And of course, this man would be well known back around West Limerick. He was in Kilconnen, he was in Kappa, and he was in Kilidi. So you're happy, Father, at this stage, though, to be involved with Drummond at Lacca? Oh, yes, I'm very, very, very happy indeed. I, I, there's a great spirit here of the, the GA here in Drummond at Lacca, and I think that uh, they would certainly deserve to win out the county championship tomorrow. I remember when I was leaving uh, Kilconnen eight years ago, I said I hope that Kilcarn and, and Drummond at Lacca would be meeting in a county final. Well, uh, there are a few with Eskaten who went to school at Kilcarn, and I think Albert Burke and his young uh, brother, we uh, gave, them, gave them a start back there. But uh, tomorrow then I hope it will be a great match, and uh, certainly I think Drummond at Lacca put in a lot of uh, work during the, their every two or three nights a week. They're here in the field, the beautiful field that was provided just uh, about the time I came here through the good work of the committee here. And I think we should uh, say a word of congratulation to their uh, trainer, Eddie Trenderville from uh, Fedemore, an old Limerick hurler who put uh, great spirit into the team and who has uh, brought them to the county final. And let's hope to a uh, uh, successful conclusion by winning the county championship tomorrow.
And I said, you've put it all in a nutshell there, Father. Thank you very much, Father. We are in the Atlaka graveyard now. We're not talking to the dead, we're talking to the living. This parish, of course, is famous for horse trainers and horses up the road here. We have P.P. Hogan and Austin Leahy. But here we have with us Doji Ring. Doji Ring. Doji Ring. Any relation to the great Christian? Well, you look a like him. We came from that part of the world, but I never saw him or heard him. I never came near me. Because I knew he was always taught to perform the liberty. Right. Didn't ever want to come near me at all. He was a born child around the fire. He did. He? Now, listen, you're going down to Ballingarry tomorrow to the match. With the help of God. Oh, right. it's like, what know. chance you well, give? Well, of course, I'm barred from the chapel zone never listen to everywhere I can go. Right. The parish priest barred me there at five or six months ago. And he said he would never get to stand the side of the premises. But you're not barred from the GA? And I was barred from pubs and everything, and I got back in where I can get back in there. Right, right. And right. never come back. So I'll then butch your trousers, sir, and bike. I then you? walked into a public house to buy a bottle of buzz. The barman, he was looking as he handed me the glass. Your young chap home from England was Hitler on your trank. But the cause of all the trouble was the trousers, sir, and bike. Then a diddle dee diddle 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 dam. I then walked into the have a train some business for to do. Should I cost them them don't air that made my navy blue? And you're only there, the old young man home from England. What hit on your track? <laughs> the cause of all the trouble was the troubles of sudden by. Take Hitler like a soldier and fight with the young and jack, but never come back so idle in which your throws are sudden by. <laughs> 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 when we finished in Drummond at Lacquer, we found that there was great confidence up there. There was a certain buzz up there, maybe more confidence than there was in Eskeaton. So will it be at Lacquer? Will it be Eskeaton? We'll all have to wait and see what happens in the final tomorrow in Ballingarry. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome here to Ballingarry for the County Junior A hauling final between Eskeaton and Drummond at Lacca. At Lacca already out in the field, also out there is the Ballingarry Youth Band. This game was preceded by the County Junior B football final between Camogue Grovers and Kappa. That game ended in a draw, eight points each. At Lacca out, poking around and here comes Eskeaton out onto the field. Eskeaton, the surprise team of the Junior Championship. They were Junior B for the past five or six years. This year opted to go Junior A and here they are in a county final. At Lacca, the more experienced team won the last three county Junior A league titles. Going for their first Junior A championship here today, however, Eskeaton going for their second. They won their one and only one in 1935, 60 years ago. So at the end of the day, will it be Eskeaton or will it be Drummond at Lacca? Both clubs could do with the championship. Referee for today hasn't made his appearance yet at Dennis Richardson of Bohol. A skating coming in down here in front of us. Drummond Lacca posing for their photographs. Big crowd here, the blue and white for Ed Lacca and the green and gold for Askeaton. We have two mascots down here now, I think that they are two Rhines maybe. Son of Finties and Son of Harleys. Two mascots for Eskeaton, you see Tom Heron, Piero of the West Board out there checking the team sheets. We've got the teams and while we have a few minutes to spare, we will give you both teams. First of all at Lacca, in goal, Jimmy Lynch, the man they call the decoy. Right full back, Dennis Herlihy, full back, Donald Scully and left full back, Nye Hogan. The half back man on the right, John Buckley, the captain. In the centre, John Fitzgibbon. And on the left, Mark Minehan. Centre field, Paul Neenan and James Green. Right half forward, Morgan Wall, centre forward, John Slattery, and left half forward, Darren Minahan. Full forward line, top of the right, Christy Costello. Full forward, Eddie Barry, and on the left, the, the old stater of the team, Mike Minahan. Eskeaton, in goal, Sean O'Barton. Right full back, Aidan Buck, full back, Mike Neville, and left full back, Pat Rocky Russell. Half forward line, on the right, Eamon Barry, in the centre, Shawnee Barry, and on the left, Anthony Kinney, centre field, Brian Costello and the captain, Shawnee Fitzgerald, half forward line on the right, Peter Harty, in the centre, Albert Buck, and on the left, Dave Susie Barry, the full forward line, top of the right, Cormac Ryan, full forward, his brother, Fintan Ryan, and top of the left, young Mike Neville. Still waiting the arrival of Dennis Richardson, this game, time to start at 3 o'clock, still five or six minutes to go, Eskeaton are now posing for their photographs, out here in front of us we see 
Paulie Kinney, Hawley unable to take his place today, broke a hand in the quarter final against St. Patrick, but his place is at left half back, is taken by his brother. Paulie Kinney, sons of Francie. On the Atlaka team, as we mentioned a few moments ago, Mike Minahan. Mike is joined as a team by his nephews, Darren Minahan and Matt Minahan. Out there in the field as well, we see Dick Costello, father of Brian Penn, midfield for a skeet and Dickie in a great holder himself with a dare, with a skeet and a Whitkill Conlon, the man behind the hauling revival in that skeet. And on the Atlaka side, we have three members of the Ban Oak club there playing with Atlaka. The Atlaka lads play football with Ban Oak. Ban Oak play hauling with Atlaka. Donald Scully at fullback. We have Christy Costello at right corner forward, who is a brother of the well-known referee Frankie Costello, and we have at full forward Eddie Barry. Three from Van Og on the Atlaka team. Atlaka in a huddle. Referee Dennis Richardson out in the middle of the field. Mike Walsh, who refereed the previous game, is one linesman and Neely Clifford, two members of the Gerald Griffin Club. They're doing the line. Four teams lining up behind the Ballingarry Youth Band on the far side of the field. Ballingarry Band. Tugged out in their green and white suits <laughs> as they strike up and away they go. A parade before the county junior A hurling final, the Battle of the A's, that's Keaton and at Lecker. And in our commentary position today here we have Jim Quaid, that great ex Limerick, Johanna Western Gale Toller, former officer of the West Limerick Board, Junior All Ireland champion winner with Limerick in 1954. We'll be getting comments from Jim during the game. The parade swings around at the top end of the field. Ballingarry, a huge crowd here today. Jim Quaid, of course, one of the famous Quaid brothers. Every time there's a Johan or a Castleman team going out in the field, there's bound to be a Quaid there. Jim and his brother Jack. Referees for the Western County Boards over a long number of years, the parade swings around and while they're parading, we'll get a few words from Jim Quaid here. Jim, what's your opinion of today's game, Jim? Well, well John, I don't really know, but I haven't seen the two teams, but I suppose Roman and Lackey will be giving maybe slight favourites for that, more experience than, than a skating. But like, saying, uh, saying that, uh, I think uh, a skating have won the hard way, they have won up. Won all their matches up to now and won them convincingly even in winter play in the league system. They beat in Castle West and they beat St. Clair. So I think they must be in with a great show. So you think they're evenly matched anyway, Jim? Oh, very evenly matched. They're both young teams. Like, there's a bit of experience. I suppose they may be more experienced than the drum and athletic team. I see John Fitzgibbon is playing out there as a half back. He played for Kilidi for a good few years, I can. Will Nerves, Jim, have a part to play in this fight? Will Nerves will have a big part to play. Whoever we'll settled the best, I think, will win this match. Parade here now in front of us at Lacker, led by their captain John Buckley and Skeet, led by their captain Johnny Fitzgerald. And in front of him we have the two lines and we have a Sean Oak battle. They're breaking. At Lacker going down to the goals and all right. Skeet going back to the other end. Green and gold of Skeet. No flash of colours here. Blue and Top of Atleka with white tops and back in there to the goals for Atleka goes Jimmy Lynch, the man they call the decoy. Hinton Ryan down here in front of us, full power for his team and also the trainer of the team. Positions and are rendering about Arnavine there by Joe Carrick. 
Men coming over to this side of the field, there's video cameras and there's tapes and there's television. We are operating for the American market. As the Ballingarry band heads over to this side of the field. Yeah. All ready now for this game. The switches are now going to throw in and the game is on. Ball break. Keaton, little bit up the field. Up there is Shawnee Fitzgerald. Still Shawnee Fitzgerald from the across to this side of the field. Down the field to Peter Happy. Peter gets the ball up into the hand. Right foot is down in front of the goal. Finton Ryan going to the ball there with Dorian Scully. Breaks between them. Finton up into the corner to his brother Carmack along the ground. Pass in front of the square. Back there is Dorian Scully. Come down with the ball. He's fouled and it's a three out. A three out there for Ed Mecca. Foul on Dorian Scully. A skating first into the attack. And John Fitzgibbon, number six there, going back to take this one. John X. Khalidi and Limerick Minor, number mm -hmm. 21 player. He bends, lifts, strikes, dropping down. On the Eskiton 70 yard line, the ball breaks out there. And Atlaka still in possession, it's in there now, in there with Paul Neen, and Neen has the ball. He's half up by Sean Fitzgerald. He takes the shot, and there's the ball over the bar. First goal of the game. A pint for from an Atlaka by Paul Neenan, son of the famous Willie Neenan. Number eight there for Drummond at Lekka. one minute gone. Drummond at Lekka, one point, it's getting no score. John O'Bannon, the youngster, coming to put the ball out. A long one, dropping down in the halfway line and a pass it. Shawnee Fitz pulling, Fitzgibbon comes in, grabs the hopping ball. Challenged by Kinney, gets the ball up in towards the goal. Back there is Mike Neville, Sean O'Bannon comes out. Ball on the ground, ball a bit slippery, going towards the end line. Over the end line for, at the expense of a 65. A 65 there. The pressure was put on there by Mike Minehan and Sean O'Baden out over the end line in the 65 for Atlaka. This one is going to be taken by number 12, Darren Minehan. His Uncle Mick was up there putting the pressure on Sean O'Baden. Darren Minehan, his brother Mac Minehan is number seven, bending over the ball. Two minutes gone, West County Junior. Final, <laughs> in towards the goal, the low ball, the dangerous ball, Baron handles and Baron clears. Son of Shawnee out into the middle of the field, dropping down between Neenan and Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald pulls, ball drops to Albert Buck out of this side of the field, Buck onto it, Shawnee Barry onto it, up into the hand and down this side of the field, going towards the sideline, still in play, John Fitzgibbon is back there, challenged by Peter Harty, but Fitzgibbon gets his puck in, dropping down up in front of the Eskiton goal. In there is Mike Neville, the full back. Also back there is Damon Barry, and he clears the ball out or off of Damon Tully near the sideline. Still in possession, still Damon Barry down this side of the field. Ball coming to Shawnee Fitz. Shawnee collects. Shawnee's going to give it to Kitog away down the field. Finton Ryan coming out for the ball. Albert Box is now here to be seen. He was back hovering, but the ball comes to Albert Box and John Fitzgibbon, and he clears it, dropping down out there where Anthony Kinney gets the ball. Out comes Shawnee Barry. Shawnee Barry out there with John Sattery. The ball is going in, and Dennis Richardson blows his whistle, and it's a free end there for a foul on John Sattery. Three minutes gone. One point for Atlaka, no score for Eskiton, and across to take this one goes Dan Minehan. Dan, taker of the 65 a few minutes ago, into the hands of Sean Ogbarn, Eskiton up the field, cleared by John Fitzgibbon. They hit it over the bar, two points at Lacker, no score for Eskiton, four minutes gone at Lacker playing with a slight breeze in the first half. Anthony Kinney seems to be okay again, Sean Ogban back there with a spare ball ready to take the puck out, up he comes. A long one, this side of the field, dropping down here between Shawnee Fitzgerald and Pauline. Neen put the hand up, grabs the ball. Half knocked down by Eamon Barry, hooked by Eamon Barry. The ball goes in there to the centre forward, John Strathery, in front of the goal. Mike Neville is in there, also in there is Eddie Barry. And in there is number, and it's a goal for Atlaka, scored by Morgan Walsh. A goal for Atlaka, scored by Morgan Walsh. One, two to Atlaka, no score for Askeaton. Number 10 there on the Atlaka team, Morgan Walsh. Morgan is a grandson of Jack Kelleher, who is the longest chairman ever of the Drummond at Lacquer Club. Five minutes gone. Eddie Barry there from Atlaka seems to have picked up an injury there, and that thrust inside in front of the goals with Mike Neville, but the ball wound up in the back of the net from Morgan Walsh. Five minutes gone. 
Eddie Barry seems to be okay again, and Sean O'Badden ready to take the puck out. Six minutes gone. County Junior A holding final. Let like a one two a skating no score. Up comes Sean O'Badden. A long one again. Far side of the field. Dropping down between James Green and Sean Fitzgerald. But back there to get it is John Fitzgibbon. John connects without catching the ball. Break out here to him and Barry. But in there again is Eddie Barry. Ball knocked away. Nice by going Mike Neville. Out to this side of the field. Sean Barry racing out here, here with John Slattery. John Slattery is deemed to have fouled Johnny Barry and it's a free for a skating 30 yards from their own goal since the half back. Johnny Barry to take it, son of Mick. Two brothers, Eamon and Davy, still on the team, nephews of John Barry, who won a Lim uh, in All Ireland with Limerick in 1957. Down to uh, Brian Costello, but Sean Fitz John Fitzgibbon cleaning up here for that lack in the early stages of this game. He miss hits it, he goes in there to Rocky. Rocky comes out and clears his left handed down this side of the field. A skating now, Susie Barry up there to Peter Hartley. Peter, a ball knocked away from him by Matt Minehan. Now again, it's Susie Barry again. He's dropping it down there. Carmack Ryan going for the ball with Neely Hogan. Out to Cynthia Ryan. Ball still on the ground from the dead like a goal. Cynthia Ryan in there, also in there is Donald Scully. And out with the ball comes uh, John. Buckley, the captain of Adlaka, and Eamon Barry out here in the half-back position. Gets the ball, knocked out of his hands. The brother Sean is out there. Also out there for, is the Darren Minehen for Adlaka. The ball on the ground. Frank Costello pulls. Referee blows his whistle there, and he's having a walk with John Fitzgibbon. Looks as if it's going to be a free to ask Keaton. A free to ask Keaton. Dennis Richardson had a quick walk there with John Fitzgibbon since they're half back on the Atlanta team. Brian Costello to take this. <laughs> 60 metres out from the Atlanta goal. <laughs> Kito, that's gone to the right and gone wide. One wide for Askeaton. Scores, Roman Atlanta 1 2, Askeaton no score. County Junior A holding final. And up comes the decoy, Jimmy Lynch, to puck it out for Atlaka. A long one, dropping down in the centre of the field. Shawnee Fitch going for the ball with Emin Barry. Fitch, he gets it into the hand, grabs it, and the kid all down to Cormac Ryan in the right corner. Neely Hogan is out there with him. He slips it inside to Albert Buck, and Albert Buck takes the shot, and that gone just to the right of the post and all right that looked as if it was going over the bar from Albert Buckwood wide a second wide for Askeaton in the space of a minute and the decoy comes out collects the ball goes back towards the goal Jimmy a farmer mine on an under 21 star with Limerick up he comes far side of the field Jim Green going for the ball with Brian Costa goes in there Anthony Kay brings it out Costello along the ground, ground holding, Fitzgibbon on the ball. Buck Green's in there, but Fitzgibbon gets his puck in. The dominant figure up to now is John Fitzgibbon, it's in the half-back for it like a Rocky Russell, the ball in front of the goal, Sean O'Gadden comes out, he gathers his rock, still going out, out there is Eddie Barry, the full forward, ball out towards the corner flag, out there is uh, Morgan Walsh, referee blows his whistle and it's a free out to West Keaton, a free out to West Keaton. 20 metres from their own goals. It looked as if it like they were in possession there again. Rocky Ruttle going to take this one. Son of John Ruttle, great hauler with a skating. Back in the 50s and early 60s, Rocky striking it down the field. Not a very long one. Dropping in the middle. Buck and Fitzgibbon under it. They both pull. But who comes in there? Only Pauline and gets the ball. And out there now is Susie Barry. Susie up into the corner. Comic Ryan coming out of the ball with Neely Hogan. Ryan is out first. He doesn't get possession of the ball. Falls to the ground. Peter Hartley has the ball, juggles with it, still goes away from him, he comes out to Darren Minehan, and Darren is fouled by him and Barry, and it's a free for it, like a, from the half-back line. Darren Minehan going to hit this one. Number seven on the Atlaka team. Nine minutes gone, will he drop it up to the uncle? Oh, he miss hits and it drops down in the centre half hour. Jim Green in there with Shawnee Fitzgerald. But in there too now is Paul Neen. He's hooked by Shawnee Fitz. Ball comes to Eamon Barry. Eamon coming out. Hooked again there by John Slattery. Slattery pulls and he misses. Barry pulls and he misses. The ball is on the ground. In there is Shawnee Fitzgerald. Shawnee going across the field. Ground falling down towards Brian Costello. Fitzgibbon has made a run, but he's let it run through. Albert Buck misses it. Comes back to Shawnee Fitzgerald. Jim Green is in there. Brian Costello pulls along the ground. And Susie Barry gets the ball and puts it down and puts the corner price into the corner. Finch is in there. Finch is going in and out comes 
is in there, he spits a half in front of the goal, then out comes the PK, he saves and he clears. Far side of the field, Anthony Kinney over there with Morgan Walsh, ball breaks between them all over the sideline. Mike Walsh has the flag up the line ball for Eskeaton. <laughs> Eskeaton looks as if they were through for a goal there, but the decoy came out, cleared the ball out over the sideline, far side of the field, Rocky to take this one. <laughs> Up he comes. Locked down in the, in the centre of the field, hard pulling in there. Susie Barry pulls in there, ball all over the side and is in, and that lack of man gone down there. Injured, accidental swing there by Susie Barry, caught in that lack of man. Another line ball for S. Keaton. That lack of man down injured, and we'll have a word, Jim. How's it going, do you think, Jim? Drummond Attack seem to have settled a lot better than a skating. Like, but a skating would really want to get a score shortly if they don't, they'll be in trouble, I think. Drummond Attack seems to be doing a lot more, lot more dangerous looking anyway at the moment. Why, John Fitzgibbon is playing a lot of it there, Jim. John Fitzgibbon, he seems to be larding the, the half-back line, and that's the experience, of course, for John. He is, he's not covering too much ground, but he's, he's in the right place all the time, and he's playing very well at the moment anyway. Thanks, Jim. Paul Neenan there, who was down injured, seems to be up. He's wearing a bandage. There's a sub on the Eskeaton team. Paul Condon is on at left half back. Anthony Kinney going off there, holding his hand on the far side of the field. Brian Costa to take the line ball. Very bad one. <laughs> Bit of confusion there. Eskeaton took the line ball. Brian Costa hit it along the ground, but now it's a line ball to Wetlacker going to be taken by Paul Neenan. Paul across this side of the field. Out there goes Darren Minehan. In low in front of the goals, into Barry. Barry has the ball in his hand, 14 metres out, coming out the field. He takes the shot and he hits it over the bar. Another point there by Eddie Barry, the Ban Oak man playing for at Lacker. A mix up there, the line ball we thought was going towards the Skeeton. All of a sudden it was going towards the Lacker, up the field, into Eddie Barry and over the bar. 1 3 for at Lacker, no score for at Skeeton. Ban Oak batting up here on our left, waiting for the ball to come back. <laughs> Up comes Sean Og, long one dropping down between Peter Hafley and Mark Meinhen. Ball into the hands of Sean, he hits, he pulls it along the ground. Cormac Ryan coming out again in front of Night Hogan. Cormac has the ball in his hand this time. Knocked out of his hand and Dennis Richardson said that's a free for a speed. And Cormac Ryan has gone down in jump, down here on our right. Accidentally ran into the holy there of Neely Hogan, it's a free end. Free in for it like a, for a skating. Brian Costello to take this one. This is Brian's second attempt to open the scoring for a skating. On three for it like a, no score for a skating. <laughs> Up comes Brian, bending over the ball. Looks at the goals, lifting, striking, and that looks a good one, yes, that's the first score of the game for Eskeaton there, by Brian Costello, one three for it, Mecca, one point for Eskeaton. <laughs> 13 minutes gone in the first half, will that score lift Eskeaton, ball dropping over there. Well, John Stafford, the centre forward, has the ball, knocked away from him. Back there goes Susie Barry. Susie coming across the field, drives it down between. Here's the half, he's in there, Albert Buck is in there, Buck is going to get it. Well, comes Mike Neville, and Mike Neville again, he has the ball. Young Mike Neville scored with two balls in the semi final against Crew, knocked away from him in there at Lacker. A blacker, his backs are tough. John Buckley gets the ball out a little bit, Pinkton Ryan over to the sideline, up into the corner, out there is Dennis. Hell here for it, Lacker. And he's penalised again by Dennis Richardson. This is another free for Askeaton. 16 minutes gone. And Brian Costello bring Askeaton more into the game. 1-3 one, to 1 point. County Junior A holding final at Ballingarry. Brian Costello, son of the Keen, former great player with Adair, Askeaton and Kilconnan. 
Young Brian on the Limerick minor team this year, also a minor for next year. Up he comes, lifting, striking. Umpires looking up, and that's over the bar. Another pint for a skating. One, three for a blacker, two pints for a skating. Frank Costello, two pints for a skating there. Sixteen and a half minutes gone. Jimmy Lynch back there in the goal. Going to puck it out again. At Lacquer going for their first junior championship ever. At Skeeton going for their second. They won the only one in 1935. A puck out by the decoy, dropping down the centre of the field. Johnny Fitz has the ball, but in there too is Gavin Minehan. Gavin plays it on the stick. He's going to be hooked here. Passes it back to side to Paul Neen. And Paul Neen on his own, challenged by Eamon Barry. And Paul takes the shot, and that one is gone to the left and gone wide. A miss there by Paul Neen. And after a good pass back by Gavin Minehan. Sean Oak Bannon up here on our left, waiting for a slitter to come back. Where are all these slitters? See John Keith throwing in the ball now. Sean Oak Bannon going to poke this one out. One, three to two pints. Up he comes again, a long one, dropping down, 65 yards out, Fitzgibbon is under, he knocks it away. Eamon Barry is in there, Shawnee Barry is in there, Eamon Barry has the ball going across the field, over to the far side, where his brother Davy, Davy is out onto the ball, can he control it? Davy is still there, but the cross goes Jim Green, but Susie Barry still gets it, he pokes it down there, where Albert Buck going for it, and Cormac Ryan, Cormac has the ball in his hand, Cormac kick is locked down, he goes to Shawnee Fitzgerald, and Shawnee Fitzgerald strikes it, and he hits the off, the, he hits the upright and comes back, to play Mike Neville out there with Dennis Perl he Perl he has the ball clears it out over the sideline line ball for Askeaton Mike Walsh over there with the line and with the flag up it looks as if it's a line ball for Askeaton Shawnee Fitz with a good shot there back off the upright hot everybody by surprise Brian Costello going across to take the line ball Askeaton are coming back into this game now after Brian Costello is opening two points Good cut across by Brian, dropping down from the side of the field. Has, right, has the ball in his hand, he's knocked away from him, and it's a penalty for Askeaton. A penalty for Askeaton after a foul there on Paul McLean. A penalty for Askeaton, but like we said in the football, you can get a hundred penalties, but if you don't score them, they're no good. Who's going to take this one for Askeaton? Is it Brian Costello coming towards the ball? Facing the ball in the 21, and we see that Ballingarry Club have the golden circle mark here today. All the players, with the exception of Brian Costello, have to be outside the circle. Three men in their goals for that Laka. The decoy is in there in the middle. Brian standing over the ball. Up he comes. Low and has in his stage from going into the net, but he's gone over the ball. Another point for Brian Costello and the season. One, three to three points. A rasping shot was saved on the goal line there and over the bow. The puck out is on its way by Jimmy Lynch again for at Mecca. Foul dropping down in the middle of the field. Susie Barry, but Jim Green gets the ball into the hand. Up into the right-hand corner. Up there is Christy Costello. He's cutting in. Christy is penalised for carrying the ball too far or catching it twice. And it's a free out for Askeaton. Christy Costello, son a uh, brother of Frankie Costello, of Van Oog. Rocky takes this one, dropping down. John Fitzgibbon, two at back and in collide. The ball breaks down. Fitzgibbon gets the off. And back there clearing is Mark Minehan for at back. Up to this side of the field. Out there gets it is Morgan Walsh. Ball goes in again to Eddie Barry. Eddie Barry left handed and puts it a goal. And Rocky grabs it. And Rocky clears it out low. Brian Costello at the far side of the field. Very near the ground, gets the ball up, and Costello strikes it. Not a very long one. Albert Buck going for the ball, but also out there is John Buckley, the captain of Atlaka. He's coming up the field. He sends a long one in towards the goal. The ball dropping down, and in there is Mike, and the ball is gone into the net. Yes. The ball is gone into the net there by Mike Minahan. Another goal for Atlaka. A backhanded swing there by number 15, Mike Minahan, the daddy of the Atlaka team. That ball there caught the Askeaton defence unaware of the backhanded flick there that would do justice to Steffi Graf into the back of the net. 
Two, three for that lacquer, three points for the skate, and the puck out is on its way. Dropping down in the halfway line, Green is under the ball, but Costello Green gets it, Jim Green, son of Frank, former treasurer of the South Board, over there pulling his Rocky, and he misses it. Up in there now comes Christy Costello, the Van Oldman. He's going in, he's challenged by Shawnee Barry, he's still going in, low ball across the goals, ball blocked out, a little bit out there comes Aiden Buck, out there. From Paul Condon, he hits it, but he misses, and Shawnee Fitz comes out. Ball knocked away from him there by, there by Darren Mine, and ball on the ground, Dennis Richardson blows the whistle, he's going to throw the ball in. Paul Neenan on the ground there again, just tumbled over it to throw in. Two, three for it, like a three points for a skating. Jim Green and Shawnee Fitz in there. Dennis Richardson said, cool it, lads, throws it in, pull, hat pulling. Aiden Buck is in there in the corner, tries to get it out. Out to this side of the field, Eamon Barry, out, out to this side of the field, out comes Mac Minehead. Mac gets a pass, Peter Hart, and he strikes it, and that looks, that ball is gone wide, out over the end line and wide. Out over the end line and wide. Six points between the team. <laughs> Sean O'Baron on the way out with the puck out again. Dennis Richardson blows the whistle. Sean will have to do it all over again. Mint was on the field, bottom in on the field. And that lacquer man giving the skate man a drink of water. That's sportsmanship. Paul Neenan pucks the ball back into Sean O'Baron again, dropping down inside the Baron, son of Shawnee. The direct descendant of Jackie Postel, who was on the 1935 team. Jackie also played in goal, so they say you can't beat Green. A long ball down to Susie Barry. Jim Green puts the hand up, he breaks the John Fitzgibbon. A beautiful striker, Fitzgibbon, without catching. Back there, and Rocky goes back, catches the ball, going backward. Trying to come out with it, he's still bottled up there. Ball on the ground, at Lacka have it. Eddie Barry has the ball in here, it's Christy Costello. Is this another goal for Ed Lacka? Yes, it's another goal for Ed Lacka. Scored by... Oh, the two by old men there, Christy Costello and Eddie Barry. And the Eskiden defence there, beaten for the top time. It's given again, clear that one from the centre half back position, ball dropping down. Johnny fits up for the ball there, Johnny connects, the ball goes back there while Mark Leinen, Peter Hart is back there also in there. Is John Buckley, the captain of the back across the side of the field. John is dressed like an American footballer. A line ball for his feet and Shawnee Barry going to take it. Cynthia Ryan is coming, he's a center half forward, Albert Buck seems to be gone in full forward. Shawnee Fitzgerald says Paul Neenan is a bit too near him. Cynthia Ryan comes out to cover, Shawnee kicks, pokes it down into the corner. Paul Mc, the brother is down, past the goal. Mike Neville is in there, Albert Buck is in there, Mike Neville is going to flick it out to Buck, yes. Ball comes out, but nobody gets it, Albert Buck has the ball, too slow pulling into the decoy. Still there, out over the end line, it's a 65 for Eskiton. 65, three points for Eskiton on the scoreboard. Scored by Brian Costello, none of the Eskiton powers have scored yet. So 65 for Eskiton going to be taken by Brian Costello. Twenty-three minutes gone in the first half. Brian Costello, the kid dog, out here, standing over the ball. He'll get the distance, all right. Has he got the accuracy? He's lifting, gets a shka hand, the fast side. Costello drives the ball in, out over the end line and wide. Another wide for a skeeton there. Three-three for it, Lacken. Three points for a skeeton. Jimmy Lynch. On his way with the puck out, dropping this side of the field, Paul Neenan goes for the ball, bit of blood on Paul, Barry there off the bandage up along the wing there by Dan Minehan, very near the sideline, Uncle Mick is up there but the ball has gone over the sideline, Neely Clifford has the flag up, looks like a line ball for Atlaka. Yes, it's a line ball for Atlaka. Eddie Barry the full forward, coming out to take it, Eddie must be good at this one, no, sorry. Line ball for Askeaton, back there the centre half, back Shawnee Barry, I thought that Eddie Barry had come out, but no, it's the other Barry, Shawnee for Askeaton. Pinky Ryan has the ball in the hand, on the halfway line, down here, out comes Carmack, but across there is John Buckley, the captain of Attacker, bursting out with the ball, on the stick. No tackle there by Peter Harty, and it's a free for Atlaka. A free for Atlaka. going to be taken by John Fitzgibbon.
Can could drive this all the way over the bar. It's about 90 yards out. Can he drive it? He'll definitely drive it into the parallelogram. It's a long one from Fitzgibbon. It's on its way. Yes, and it's gone over the bar. A great score there by John Fitzgibbon from 90 yards out. Coming at Lacker 3 4, a speed and three points. Jim Quaid, how do you think? Drummond uh, Attacker seems to be laughing the whole thing away. Drummond Attacker half back line seems to be completely in top and uh, Drummond Attacker full power line seems to be on top and top of the street and full back. Puck out again there and a skate now into the attack. Finzi Ryan has the ball over there, over there also. John Buckley, Finzi gets his puck in. Albert Buck coming out there, the ball drops. Buck no, knocks away again. They're still hard pulling. Albert Buck is in there trying to get the ball up in his stick. Finzi Ryan coming across. In there is Shawnee Fitz, and Shawnee gets the ball up, and Shawnee hits it wide. Another <laughs> wide for Eskiden, there, three, four for it, like at the three points, ten points between them. Paul Neen and Luzon decide to be quick puck out. Good aim and Barry gets it, aim and three at Lackham in around him. He hand passed it out to Shawnee Fitzgerald, drops the hole in, you can't drop the hole in, hand pass the ball, and it's a three for it, like Three at Lackham in, pressurizing aim and Barry there, and Darren Minehan is going to hit this one for it like a 55 metres out. Kito strikes it well and strikes it over the bar. That's another point for it like a score by number 12, Darren Minehan. 3 5 for it like a 3 points for Eskiden. 26 minutes gone in the first half. Four minutes to go. Can Eskiden get a goal before half time? They need it. Sean Oak Barron waiting for a ball. Up comes Sean Oak with the puck out again. Dropping to this side of the field. Shawnee fits under the ball with Paul Neen in the ball break. Frank Castillo in there, but Paul Neenan kicks it up to John Slattery. John moves along the ground out this side to Darren Minehan. Raymond Barry's in there, Raymond is on the ground, ball is on the ground. Then it switches and blows the whistle and penalises John Slattery for picking the ball off the ground. The free to West Eden. Paul Neenan's bandage seems to gone loose there again, stoppage in play. <laughs> Dennis Richardson, maybe he's a male nurse, maybe he's a doctor. He fixes it. Johnny Barry standing over the ball. 65 metres, 66 metres from his own goal. Up he comes. He drives it. He's dropping down 20 metres out. Peter Hartley under the ball. But out there again comes that man, Fitzgibbon. And out here, Herman Barry is going to get it. He drops it. And passes across to the brother. The brother is tackled by Paul Neen. Sean East, put half that down. Out there comes Jim Green and Jim Skidog up the wing. Out there is Uncle Mick coming off of the ball. Out there with young boxes with him. Young Mick here, old Mick here seems to be getting the better of the young ball in front of Barry. Is this another goal for Atlaka? Yes! Another goal for Atlaka scored by the bad old man Eddie Barry. And a speed and attack broke down here in front of us. And they're speeding the fence, just like a saucepan, a saucepan with a leg. <laughs> Two minutes to go to halftime, the puck out is on its way again, dropping down the half-back line. Fitzgibbon puts the hand up and Fitzgibbon grabs, half locked down by Johnny Fitzgerald. Paul Neenan gets the ball in his hand. Still Peter Hartley puts the pressure on, ball on the ground, Johnny Fitzgerald pulls. Fitzgibbon out again as well, hand ball to the ground. Still Fitzgibbon in his ball. A little bit of a shamash is going on down here now between us. John Fitzgibbon on the ground, Mark Minehan in there, Dennis Richardson in there talking. This reminds me of Willie Mahoney and Harry Russell. John Fitzgibbon on the ground, John Simpson. An injury there. Referee is booking Charlie Fitzgerald. Captain of Eskiden. Jim, at Lacka, well on top of this thing, four, five, three, five. Got on top, top all over now. Lacka seems to be posting at the moment, anyway. 
I skate and would badly want to go all. If I don't get a goal, I'd say that in the second half. Skate and pull back down, do you seem to be in a bit of trouble when the ball goes up? Terrible trouble. Pull back down, terrible trouble. And I'm not like that. Half back down, a lot of them. Right, John Fitzgibbon recovered from his injury there, playing an outstanding game since the last back from that like a former Salidi player. So in and Johnny Fitz pulls in the ball up, so the corner, corner Klein is up there. Neely Hogan is up there. Jack Minehan comes out with the ball in his hands, driving all past Peter half is penalised for charging and it's a free for Askeaton. Brian Pastoreau, can he put his sheet in? Four points on the board for Askeaton as we approach half time. None of the Askeaton forwards have scored in the first half. Three points scored by Brian Pastoreau, can he make it four? That one is going to cross the goals and wide, wide on the far side of the field. The season could badly do with it. Two scores, five wides for a season and two wides for a slack in the first half. Puck out again by Jim Lynch on its way, far side of the field. Paul Neal and under it. Paul Condon in there gets the ball, half block. Goes out to Davy Barry, Davy Barry crossing the halfway line, hand passes it inside to Finkley Ryan, Finkley Killick hits the ball in and hits it wide. Wide there, Finkley Ryan got the ball in the half time, which is blown there by Dennis Richardson of Bohr in the half time. It's at like a 4 5, a skating three pints in the county junior A holding final. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Back live, which you hear again in Ballingarry for the second half, the county junior A holding final in the Battle of the A is Eskeaton at Lacka. Half time score, 4 5 at Lacka, 3 points for Eskeaton. Can Eskeaton lift the game and come back in the bullet Lacka continue to dominate their way in the first half? Again, a ball in along the ground there by Morgan Walsh in front of Eddie Barry, the full power Barry striking the ball and hits it over the bar. The first goal game again there for Eddie Barry. The bad old man playing for Red Lacker. 4-6 for Drummond Red Lacker, 3 points for Eskeaton. Puck out by Sean O'Brien, the long one. Fast side of the field. Brian Costello on the ball with Jim Green. Green jumps, misses. Buck has the ball for Eskeaton. Left play, left hand in front of the goal. Cinco Nine has the ball. In the air, through is Mike Neville. The ball comes out to this side. Through the and Mike Neville out for it. Mikey won't just want to mop without breaking it. John Buckley, the captain of Atlaka, ball along the ground, kicks it out in front of him. Pulled on there by Morgan Walsh and still pulled on there by John Sassery down along the wing. Rocky comes out for a season, heading towards the sideline, over the line, line ball for Atlaka to be taken by Paul Neenan. <laughs> Up comes Paul Neenan. Off the legs there, Shawnee Fitz clinks to the hand of Brian Costello. Up towards Albert Buck, he has it in the halfway line. He hits it in low, and Cynthia Ryan doesn't read it. And who comes out here? On the idiot, like a full back, Donald Scully, and clears the ball out there up to Morgan Walsh. Morgan Walsh over with the, the man from Oakland, and the man from Oakland gives it back to the left zone. It's a three in there, a three in. Johnny Barry is going to be booked here for a free, for a foul on Dan Minehan. <laughs> Eamon Barry, taught to Shawnee Barry, but Eamon Barry, he's been sent off. Eamon Barry has been sent off the field. He looks as he's been sent off the field there by Dennis Richardson, yes. Eamon Barry has been sent off the field for a tackle there on Darren Minahan. Three minutes into the second half, 4 6 to 3 points. 14 men skating. Can 14 men do any better than the 15 men skating? This is going to be a free to wet lacquer. They're going to stretch the lead here to 4 7 to 3 points. By Darren Minahan, lad who is. Down in there just a few moments ago, Eamon Barry off the skating team, sent off there by referee Dennis Richardson. Is this going to be another score for Atlaka? Is it going to be 4 7? Yes, 4 7 for Atlaka, 3 points for a skating. 
19 points to 3, 16 points between them. Took out again by Sean Osborne. Dropping down between Fitzgibbon and Buck. Ball breaks to Shawnee Fitz, up to Susie Barry. Susie comes out the field. Half blocked down, but in there is the left cornerback, Neely Hogan. Neely is a spare man. Ball knocked down this time. Shawnee Barry has the ball. Rising in again, throws the attacker goal out of Buck. Jumps up, ball knocked away from there by Hogan again. Fitzgibbon over the shoulder, down the field. Rocky knocks it down, but in there is Christy Castro, long ground, cleared out again there by Paul Condon. Back from Paul Neenan, and Paul strikes the ball over the bar, another point for that knocker. Paul Neenan, son, as we say, of the great Willie Neenan. And the first cousin of centre-half back, John Fitzgibbon, puck out again by Sean O'Barron, over the far side of the field, out again by Doug Lacker. Dan Minan has the ball fouled over there by Peter Hartley. Peter Hart is going to be booked this time by Dennis Richardson. That didn't look a dirty tackle from here, but another name going into the book over there. John Fitzgibbon going to take this one. Four minutes into the second half. Four, eight for it, like a three points for his Keaton. 20 points to three. Fitzgibbon standing over the ball. Hinted one from further out in the first half. Can he put this one over? It's a long one. It's another mighty one from Fitzgibbon. Dropping down inside. Sean O'Barron. What's it out though? Has it gone into Eddie Barry? And Eddie brings it back and puts it over the bar. Another point for it, like a, With the greatest of ease there by Eddie Barry, the Van Oakman. Dennis Richardson in there now, he seems to be booking Mike Minahan, left corner forward for Atlaka. <laughs> Puck out for Keaton to be taken by Sean O'Bannon, dropping down in the half hour line. Jim Green knocks it down into the hand, hooked by Albert Buck, going towards the sideline. With a heart, he pulls the ball to the ground, Green kicks it up the field. Johnny Barry comes out, clears it up into the corner. Susie Barry is out there, seems to push John Fitzgibbon in the back, but he gets away with it. Paul McRyan doesn't get a hold of it, out there with Neely Hogan, passes the ball out to John Fitzgibbon. Fitzgibbon has the ball, he clears it out into the centre of the field. Albert Buck's going to catch this one, yes, he catches it in the halfway line. In towards the goal, Fenty Ryan in there, Mike Neville in there, Fenty Ryan. It's Fenty Ryan through here for the goal for Askate and misses, pulls and misses. Still Fenty Ryan, yes, Johnny Fitch in there. Ball goes in and the decoy saves it and the decoy brings it out to John Buckley. And Buckley clears and Paul Condon under the ball here. But in there, Paul Condon, but in there too is John Stassery. Since the half hour for that backer, up the field, and in there goes Darren Minehan. Darren has the ball into a shallow battle, bounces in front of it. Darren collects and clears. Out to the far side of the field, Jim Green and Albert Buck going for the ball, dropping. Green puts the hand up, the ball breaks back to Fitzgibbon. And without touching, Fitzgibbon clears it. Paul Conlon for a skating in the half back line, clears it up the field again. A low ball, Johnny Fitz going for the ball. Jim Green is there, Johnny Fitz, the break of the ball, favour Johnny there. Albert Buck throws it up, but John Buckley knocks it away. And it's a free on John Buckley there by Albert Buck, the free for it, Mecca. 65 metres out from their own goal. John Fitzgibbon to take this one again. <laughs> Referee Dennis Richardson coming over here. Neely Clifford had a flag up. <laughs> Dennis Richardson seems to be going towards. <laughs> Going around in a circle, Dennis Richardson. <laughs> Talks to nobody, only himself. John Fitzgibbon going to take the three and a half in the centre of the field. Another long one by Fitzgibbon. Up here where Morgan Walsh goes to the ball and Paul Condon. Condon knocks it out. Tries to pick it up. There's just one come three at like a man there. Warren is John Stassel. He's pocket back down. Out again comes Condon. 
Shawnee into the hands again. Oh, there's a ball in there by John Stathry. Sean Oak, is he going to collect it? Yes, Sean Oak's going to collect it. Challenged by Eddie Barry, but Baden feels it out beside the field. Paul Neenan has the ball. Charges into Brian Costello. Neenan puts the ball into Baden again. And now over the end line for a 65. 65. This one going to be taken again by Don Minahan. Seems to be the free taker from the 65 meters in for Atlaka. John Fitzgibbon takes the long range run. Down over the ball, strikes it left handed. Square balls of the referee, Dennis Richardson, took out for a skating 4 9 to 3 points. The skating haven't scored yet in the second half. Van O'Garden off the ground. He strikes it. Pinky Ryan going for the ball with John Buckley. Buckley gets the better of it. Past the field, Shawnee Barron pulls and misses. This side of the field, Keith and Shawnee Barry is one of them. He has the ball left handed in towards the goal. Ball breaking down in there. Susie Barry is in there. Susie still in there. Ball coming out of it. Susie pulls across the goal. Albert Buck. Goal here for Eskate and Shirley. He puts the ball over the bar. Over the bar. It looks as if there was a goal on there for Eskate. A point there by Albert Buck. Good play by Shawnee Barry. Got the ball in. Broke down from Susie Barry. Susie seems to be playing full forward. Puck out again by Jim Lynch. Far side of the field. Out there is... Paul Neenan, beautiful strike on Neenan, down in front of Eddie Barry, he comes out with it. Mike Neville is out there, Mike lifts, strikes, up to Shawnee Pittsburgh, who's there, but John Buckley, the captain of Atlaka, drives up the field. Sean, as you said, like an American footballer, he's still going on. Ball knocked away from him there by Shawnee Barry, up to Shawnee Fitzgerald, Shawnee fouled and it's a free for us, Keaton. He's going to take a quick one to Albert Buck, Buck has the ball. He strikes it in the halfway line. He's in front of the goal. Who's in there? And it's a penalty for Ash Keaton. Dennis Richardson running in. A good thinking there. Good quick thinking there by Shawnee Barry. They have a quick one out to Albert Buck in in front of the goal. The foul on Susie Barry. And it's another penalty for Ash Keaton. They got one in the first half. Saved at the expense of a pint. Shawnee Fitch seems to be going to take in this one himself. Three men in the Atlaka goal. All the other players outside the golden circle. This is a new rule that came into the game this year. Gives the advantage to the man who's hitting the penalty. Shawnee Fitz is in there getting the feel of the ball. And the full back from Atlaka seems to have been put off and Shawnee Fitz fouls the ball. Things are not going right. For Eskid and Shawnee play the ball twice on the stick. Donald Scully, the Van Oak fullback, seems to be sent off the team there. I don't know for what. Maybe just for a bit of back chat, it seems a harsh decision. Nobody was down injured. There's a free out for Atlaka. John Fitzgibbon, is he going to take this one? No. He's leaving it to Neely Hogan. We're back to 14 aside. Neely Hogan calls back Fitzgibbon. Fitzgibbon is going to take it. He's going to drive it 90. <laughs> And he drives it a bit with the 90. The ball's dropping down. Shawnee e. Barry going for the ball with John Scatley. Out to the far side of the field. Uncle Nick has the ball, puts it into the centre. Back there is Shawnee e. Fitz. Knocks it out to Brian Costello. Costello in the centre of the field, coming up. Hand passes it is, there's going to be a collision. But Shawnee e. Fitz kept his eye on the ball. Out to Buck. Buck is on a run at this stage. He goes up. Is he going to take another score for us, Keaton? And he puts the ball wide. Albert Buck had a chance to run the ball there and take on John Fitzgibbon. As Keaton needs a goal and he puts it wide. Four nine to four points. First wide of the second half there for Ash Keaton. Up comes the decoy again, hooks it out a long one. Jim Green under the ball, Green has the ball in the hand, coming across the field. Still Jim Green half locked out. In there for Morgan Walsh. Morgan has the ball still going in. Still, Shawnee Barry robs in there and 
knocks it out to Peter Hartley and Hartley clears it up the field. Paul McRain out there with John Fitzgibbon. But Fitzgibbon again wins it up to Darren Minehan. Minehan left-handed across the side of the field. The man with the bandage and the man with the number 17 going for the ball. Paul Condon wins it up to Shawnee Fitz. Shawnee the captain, the long one. Dropping, is this one going to go over the end line and why can Susie Barry keep it in? No, it's gone over the end line and it's another wide for Askeaton. <laughs> 14 minutes gone in the second half, 17 minutes left. Can Eskiden come back into this game? Jim Lynch on his way out again. Bull and Shea, Tit Milan, the Parker. Ha Paula can do now, and so it was tough. Sean, what's that thing on us that lack of this star? Uncle Mihal there, and all comes Mike Nevin, clears the ball out for a seat, and Albert Box wins it out here in the centre of the position. Just won't come up now, he gets it up out to this side to Finton Rice. Finton has the ball in in front of the goal, this is another wide for Askeaton. Askeaton with a lot of possession, but they are not putting it to a good advantage. Dan Minehan seems to be down injured there, getting up again. <coughs> Tim is on his way again, dropping down here again. Shawnee going for the ball with Paul, with Paul Dean and breaks up the Finty. Finty kicks it across the ball with Buck, Buck in front of the goal. 40 yards out, he's going in into Cormac Rice. He's got a goal on for the Skeeton. Yes, there is. A goal for Skeeton there. Finton Ryan across to Albert Buck into Cormac Ryan and into the back of the net. And John Fitzgibbon has gone down injured here. The Atlaka center half back. I think John might have pulled a muscle there. I didn't see any collision with any other player, but John is down injured. 4-9 to 1-4. Jim Quaid, how is it going now? Are they speeding out of this game or are they still got a chance? Well, they have uh, a long way to go, but they're coming back. They're fighting, they're fighting well back. They're hit two or three very bad ways. Like, but the goal has come now. You'd never know that they might make a, a, a revival of it, you know? Hopefully they will. Right, OK. Jim Quaid still thinks there's life in Askeaton. Going to be a puck out again this time for Romanet Lecker. John Fitzgibbon going off the field. A round of applause from all sides here for John Fitzgibbon. He played a fantastic game. John seems to have picked up an injury there. He's going to be a big loss for that Lecker. Who's coming on? We haven't seen anybody coming on yet for that Lecker. I see Paddy Hurley there, the team manager and the secretary of Drummond at Lacking in the middle of the field with Dennis Richardson, the referee, he's making a switch. There's a man over that pair the close off of a man in the far side. He's ready to come in. Here he comes. A sub in at center half back there for at Lacan, number 19, Donald Inwright. Is it Donald Inwright? Yes, Donald Inwright. He's on for at Lacan. Puck out by the decoy. Dropping in the centre of the field. At Lacan moves the ball up to Uncle Mick. Uncle Mick along the ground, up into the corner where Christie gets the ball and Christie into Baron. Baron has it in the chest, comes out, sends the dummy to Mike Neville, hits up Albert Buck and ball drops. Finty Ryan has the ball and along the ground out there is John Buckley, the captain, but Finty goes back, gives it back to Brian Costello, breaks away. Costello along the ground, back to the stop there, Donald in right, puts the ball down towards the seat and goal, Rocky catches, Rock, kicks it along the ground, Rocky out with pull, this is Rocky, still Rocky, great half dead Rocky up the field, into the hand of Johnny Fitzgerald, back to Johnny Barry, Johnny Barry and it's a free there, a free there, I followed the flight of the ball, it's a free for that Laka. Johnny Fitzgerald got the ball strict to the ground and the advantage fell to that Laka now it's a Another free to at Lacker to be taken by Darren Minehen, number 12, 4 9 to 1 4. Good strike by Darren Minehen over the bar, another point for at Lacker, 4 10 to 1 4. 14 minutes left. Thank you. 
Puck out by Sean Ogbannon again, dropping out there between Jim Green and Brian Costello. Ball breaks, Albert Bork along the ground up the comic line, a side in the corner, tackled by Neely Hogan. He gets the ball in to Johnny Fitzgerald, who's made a run forward. Albert Bork has the ball again. He's going in front of the goal, he's 14 as out. Hello, Chapman Bork, and it's saved by Jimmy the Beacon. And over the bar, another point for Ash Keaton. It looked as if there was a goal on there. Go oh, 10 to 1 5. Puck out again, it's knocked down by Phil Knight to Shawnee Fitzgerald. Shawnee's going in, he's fouled, and it's another free. The Atlanta defence doesn't seem to be as strong since John Fitzgibbon went out of the middle, and this free here is going to be taken by Brian Castello. Eighteen minutes gone, twelve minutes left in the game. Brian Costello striking this one and striking it over the bar. Another point for Askaton. Four ten to one six. Jimmy Lynch up there, fell jewels to Jimmy. No delay with the puck out. The ball is on its way, going to drop down here. For the far side of the field, out there is Darren Minehen. Sits Peter Hart, he's been the for a chop down there on Dan Minehen. It's another free for it, like a... <laughs> And a message here that Pat Connell's dog is missing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's gone to Shelburne Park, Pat. Dan Minehen stands over the free for it, like a... <laughs> Long one again, Shawnee Barring looking up, is this dropping into Shawnee's hands, yes. Shawnee has the ball coming out, challenged by Uncle Mick, blocked down and out over the end line at the expense of a 65, a 65 for Atlaka. Mike, mine hand in there, the old stage of putting the pressure on Sean Oak Barron, forced him out over the end line with the ball, it's 65 to Atlaka. Then mine him to strike this one again. Eleven minutes left in the game. Is this another point for it, Lacker? Can they make it 4 11? <laughs> left handed strike by Dan Minehen out over the end line and wide. Four remains. 22 points to nine. In favour of it, Lacker. First wide for it, Lacker in the second half. Ball dropped down in the centre of the field. Point Costello out there up the centre and line along the ground up to Shani Fitz. But who's reading it inside there? Only Neely Hogan out fast in front of Comic Ryan. Out there comes Donald in right. Donald gives a short one. Mike Neville is out there. Mike along the ground. Out again by Donald in right. Jim Green for a lacquer. Up here on Rocky Stick, step hard and he grabs it. Cross to the side of the field to Finton Wright. He's chased here by John Buckley and by Paul Neiman. He gets it past him. Oh, Finton Mitch hits the ball, but he gets it again. He's still tackled by John Buckley. Buckley wins the ball. This is a great holder, Buckley. He drops it down. Rocky coming across again. And it's a free there, I think, for a top man tackle. A top man tackle. <laughs> No, pull, a double pull, he said. I thought it was a third man tackle there. Rocky didn't seem to have committed any foul, but it's a free in for it, like a... Richie Costello, the Van Hoog man, is it? No, it's Darren Minehan. Darren Minehan going to take this one. And that's another wide there for Dan Minehan, two wide for Atlaka in the second half, but they've got four, ten. Jim, are Atlaka out of reach at this stage? I think so, Atlaka, done behind the skating right now, I think they're intended. Let's go there! The skating gets a score, and Atlaka seems to come back and get another score, so the gap is too much now anyway, I think, you know. The skating are not dying. Wide Atlaka in the pack again, Morgan Walsh gets the ball. Up here, Eddie Barry, half locked down there by Aiden Book. John Oakman out to the ball. Still out, Cockney out to his own goal, still Shawnee. Hand passes it out to Brian Costello, who's locked down. 
Look, this is very near the ground there by Dan Miner, and Dan is coming. Mike Neville has gone back into the goal for a speed, and Mike Miner is out there. He's coming across. He puts the ball in. Back there is Shawnee Barry. He's going to get the ball a long one away up the field. Mike Neville coming out the ball there with Dennis Hell. He ball breaks behind him. Paul Neal gets it out. Out here to Dan Minehen. Minehen a long one. Down towards the goal. This is going to into the hands of Sean O'Bannon again. And Sean pops it out. Who does it go to this time? But John Slattery sends a forward for attacker. Challenged and beaten by Shawnee Barry. Barry one handed pulls and misses. Gets it the second time out of Jim Green. Jim Green out there challenged and tackled by Brian Costello. He gets his puck in, dropping inside in the square. Mike Neville is in there. Sean O'Bannon is in there. Gets the ball up. Steals the ball. Far side of the field. Albert Box is out there, but who did in on it? Dan Mining gets the ball for a tracker. Falls to the ground. Rocky grabs, clears, way up the far side of the field. Shawnee Fitz going over there with Don Linwright. Linwright gets the ball, puts the tracker back into the attack. Shawnee Bannon pulling hard, runs and pulls and misses. And Morgan Wall gets the ball for a tracker and hits it in and saved by Sean Oakbound. Now in the middle of the field, Finty Ryan and John Buckley. Ball drops to Shawnee Fitz. She has it out to Albert Box and he goes. In the middle of the field, Tarshay Gwal is stuck. Tarshay dodges out of the mark. On a cool attacker, Tarshay fares out of the mark for the corner for Orion. Orion and Gwal is stuck. Ball and chair. On the road, Aaron Dolliver from the Ivory Shock. Mihal and Mayna Corner said Lacker. Ah, oh, Derek Helhe there, I guess the free out, the free out for that Lacker. Fallen Derek Helhe, another at Lacker man down in Judd. In his hell, he re out for it like a. In his riches and says, You're on my patch, get off the pitch, and it's a free out for it like a. On the 25 yard line. Healy Hogan looks as if he's going to hit this one. No, it's not Neely Hogan, it's Mark Minehan. This side of the field is John Buckley all alone. John right down in front, tip, dropping down in front of this. Aiden, Aiden Buck gets it out a bit, out of this side of the field. Charlie Fitz out there, and Ryan is out there. Fitzy gets the ball, he's going to play it underground up there to Susie Barry. Susie Barry, Comic, Ryan making her own. Comic has the ball in in front of the goal. Ball blocked out there by Jones. Even Donald Scully to the right corner back in his hell hit out in the middle of the field here where Paul Neenan gets the ball fast out of the field, Jordan Minehan. Out there with him is Peter Harty. Still Peter Harty and Dan Minehan in deep. John Slattery hears the ball for a track but he's knocked away by Peter. Harty goes backward, he's fouled and it's a free for Askeaton. Peter Harty going back into the right half back position since Eamon Barry was sent off the field there. The free press Keaton going to be taken by Shawnee Barry. Five minutes left. County Junior A holding final. One minute like a four tennis Keaton one six. Ali Barry driving a long one, dropping down inside in the square. Albert Brock is in there. But in there, for my, Mark Minehan for it like a catch the ball and clears it out. Referee's gone, another at like a man down. Dennis Richardson running backwards. Gone back to have a chat with the umpire. We follow the flight of the ball. We're having a chat with the umpire back there. Adi Neville seems to be on the Askeaton team here. Maybe it's young Mike Neville is going off. I didn't see young Mike Neville. Adi Neville is on. Hook <laughs> out. Down at the other end of the field. Mike Minehan back there. Back there is Rocky Rutter. Peels the ball out up here. Here to Peter Harty. Strikes it up towards the Atlaka goal. Breaks in there to Susie, to Paddy Neville. 
Teddy Neville has the ball in to Cormac Ryan. He's got another goal here for a Skaden. No save inside by the decoy, and it's a three out. A three out, and there's a little shamaji going on inside there in the goal mouth. There's an Eskeaton player on the ground. He's up again. Dennis Richardson going in. Have a chat in there with several players. Is this a free out for it, like that? Is it, a, or is it another penalty for us, Keaton? Has a shamazu going on up here at the top goal? <laughs> this has been a very sporting game up to the last couple of minutes here, but it's... Something after breaking out down there at the town goal. And as a result of all that, there, Albert Brock has been sent off the Eskeaton team. Albert Brock, after being sent off there by Dennis Richardson, a free out for Atlaka to be taken by Mark Minehan. Down in the centre of the field, Susie Barry out there. Susie has the ball, he's going in. Still Susie, still going in. 40 metres out. Locked down. Still Susie Barry, and passes the ball into a Cormac Ryan, but who's back there for it, Lekker? Only Jim Green, Jim gets the ball, shoulder there by Shawnee, fits to the ground, Shawnee coming across, but Lekker pulls hard, and up there is uh, Dan Mining, he gets the ball out a little bit to Morgan Walsh, Walsh up the field to John Slattery, Slattery a long ball, going to drop down here between Mike Neville and Eddie Barry goes off Eddie Barry's hand across the hoop and Mick Mick Minehan. Mike Minehan in front of the goals. He's going to strike it and he's going to put it over the bar. That's a good score there by Mike Minehan. A good attack by Atlaka up the field and over the bar by Mike Minehan. Picked foot out by Sean O'Bannon. Out to Brian Costello. Challenged by Mike Minehan. Costello gets the ball. He's going to give it a long one. Dropping down. Maybe it's too long. Tom McLean is in there under it. Past the face of the goal. Nobody there. Out there after the ball goes Donald in right. Donald challenged by Shawnee Fitch. Hook locked down by Shawnee Fitch. John is he going to give it into Susie? Shawnee sells the dummy coming in. No rasping shot. And oh, the deep guy puts up the hand and he puts it. It looked as if, yes, it's a 65. The umpire wave wide, but the deep guy stuck out a paw and put it around the goal post for a 65. <laughs> Tony Barry to take this one, time ticking away. Fifty seconds left in this game, in there in front of Peter Hart, he has the ball, but up, pulling hard and low, and great shave again there by Jimmy Waltz, by Jimmy Lynch. The man that called the decoy out over the end line at the expense of another 65. Jimmy has played his play, played his part here in Atlaka. We met his brother and father in Atlaka yesterday. She sang for us. Johnny Barry to take the 65 for us, Keaton. We're into injury time. 4 11 to 1 6. Johnny drops it in around the house. Peter Hardy up pulling. Hard Johnny! Hard comes Johnny Scully. The Johnny Scully clears the ball out to Jim Green. Green down the field. Hayden Buck going back for it, gets it. They out a little bit, slips by there, and Paul Condon up to Shawnee Barry. Shawnee Barry up to Finty Ryan. Finty has the ball in the hand, still going on, still Finty Ryan, still going on. Hart pulling in there, all oh, goes through the hands of Peter Hart. Peter's going to pass it to Brian Costello. Brian. Tips to the ground, hand pass goes this way, and there goes the final whistle. As Mark Minahan collects the ball for a Black and a Black County Junior A champion for 1995 in the Atlaka crowd. Swam onto the field here in Ballingarry. Final score 4 11 to 1 6. <laughs> Thank you.
I would like to thank both teams for serving up a fine display of hurling here today. Now, there are a few people I must thank before, before I do any more. I would like sincerely that you would put your hands together and thank the Bell and Gary Club for having the pitch in an excellent state. I would like sincerely... Nothing said also to thank them for their hospitality and for their stewardship in everything they have done here today. And I think this moment cannot pass without I thanking our own county PRO for a first class programme here today, Sandra Marsh. At times there are referees and they have problems, but I would like sincerely to thank Dennis Richardson his linesmen and his umpires for the work that they did today. Thanks very much, Dennis. It is, it is a fair achievement for any team and for two teams to show tremendous commitment, tremendous dedication, and to the first, starting at the 1st of November, to train for seven or eight months. And it must be heartbreaking for one team to come to a county final and to be beaten after that. But ne ne <coughs> I will say this much, as Gaten came up from the B last year and they came up to the A, they won the West Limerick Championship, that's a consolation to them. I would like to say this, as chairman of the county board, it is nice to see a team like as Gaten, who are traditionally a football team, coming forward and reaching a county final in June or A hurling. And I think they deserve a round of applause. Well, 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 well. But I suppose today, yeah. without fear or favour to anybody, and without saying it, today belongs to one, one club, and that is at Lacker. They showed tremendous commitment from the time the ball was thrown in. They took their scores, both young and old, in a tremendous fashion. And I would like to congratulate them for it. There were some fantastic displays of hurling by individuals and collectively as a team. I think they played very, very well. So I, I am delighted to see them. They have been a long time. It is a very hard job. I think nobody knows that they're mentors more than when you are at intermediate level and when you drop down to come back up. But I think they are going up intermediate junior championships. They'll be competing in the intermediate championship if they can serve up the type of hurling they served up here, here today. There will be a big asset to the intermediate championship. We're going to see that way. Come on, hey! It is, it is grand for the people that won here today, but I must sympathise with the people, the selectors and the manager and all that were over us gate. And I must congratulate everybody in charge of Atlaka. They have been a tremendous club. They have given wonderful commitment down through the years. I think, gentlemen, you owe a lot to your players and to, above and beyond all, to your officials. 
I think your officials have shown here today, your selectors, your manager and everything, the commitment that they have given. And I think they deserve your thanks because without them, you wouldn't have won the county. I think I have said enough, but it is my pleasure as chairman of the county board to present the county cup. Go back to the On behalf of Jim Rebecca, I'm accepting this cup on behalf of the man here alongside me, John Buckley. Big up! We have four years last waiting for this, if not more. 18 years, I suppose. On behalf of the club, I'd like to thank the county board and everything they've done for us during the year. Um, I'd like to thank the rest of our team today. We put out, I suppose, 15 men and we had subs to bring in and everyone proved it during the year. The will was there during Stoop the week, lads. <laughs> during the week, lads, in the parish, everyone was behind us in our own quiet way. And it's a long time coming. We've had our ups and downs during the year. We've had men go to the line and we've had put the whole thing back together again. We've proved as we can come back. We try our best as intermediate to, to serve the club as best we can. Um, just on behalf of the, the rest of the players, I'd like to thank Get up. Simon McCullough for the sponsors of uh, Socks and Togs going into this game today. I'd like to thank four manager and three selectors from the club who've been with us the last couple of years, I think, and have proved that if you stick with it long enough, you'll do it. That's Paddy Holly, manager, Simon McCullough, Johnny Costler, and Mike Leary. Okay. Um, yes, we don't, it's been a long road and we, we've, we've been a long time training and I don't think we could do it without one man and one man came up from Fred and all he was promised or nothing but he's put the result on the field Brian, 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 Brian. We've had a tough year with injuries and everything and you know yourselves it's a game where if you get injured there's no one to look after you often have to drive home so one lady looks after us, that's Ness Party McCullough. <laughs> and um, just again, I'd like to finish this with three cheers for us skating. They've served up some great haulings during the year, and it's everyone's wish that they, they can do it. We had a long time waiting, I think it's well over two lads. And three cheers for us skating today. <laughs> We have um, Paddy Holly, team manager of Drummond at Becker. Paddy, no question about the result. You were far better on the day. On the day, we were, I suppose, the best team. We got, the great, we got a great staff there, like John, as you see. Like, you know, Morgan, Morgan Rich got the first goal. Uh, I think Eddie Bell got the second one, and then Mike Mineham. I'm not sure now, John, you know, at this stage. I haven't my thoughts recollected at the moment, which was great. It's great for the club. You know, it's something like, you know, we've, we, we've dreamed about, like, for the last 10, 15 years, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully we can build from there. You know, we were great Lucas for an intermediate side, you know, and I, I hope that the club goes on to greater things. Your first junior championship, the first one is always the sweetest of them. Well, that's true. Uh, I was just talking there to Willie Neenan and Mike Leary there at the start, just before the game, while we were watching the football game. In 1971, they went up to Kilmarnock and they were red hot favourites, you know, to win it, like, you know, and um, and were beaten by, by four points by Mona Lane and that, you know, and that was a terrible disappointment to them, you know, and like, and it's great to come back here today, you know, and the boys have two connections with, like, say, Willie's son Paul was playing there today, and Mike Leary's nephew, Dini Hill, he was playing cornerback, and both of them had excellent games. Big night in Atlanta tonight, Paddy. Oh, great night in Atlanta. And in, and, in, and in Drummond as well. John. And in Drummond, yes, exactly. We'll see you during the week. Though. Okay, thanks very much, John. Thank you. Thanks, Paddy. <laughs> Mike Minehan. Yeah. Mike, I believe. You're the only connection with the 77 team you won the Intermediate Championship and you're still going like I am, I am. This is it for me today now. This is, is it? it, yeah, this is it for me today. I said after today, this was going to be it. And this is it. Like, I'm delighted we won. 
We were calling you Uncle Nick in the comments, <laughs> yeah. you don't mind it at no, all. No, I don't mind at all. You had two nephews playing as well. I had, yeah. Damn and Mark. Damn and Mark, yeah. That was brilliant. That was great. That been great. Holly, a great help even to me, you know. But the pace was getting to me a little bit now. That's what right, But you still got a nice backhander here in the I did, I did, I did. I did. I knew. I, the way it was, I was facing off that direction, I knew I couldn't, I wasn't going to do anything with it if I got it up, so I just flicked it back and it looked, it looked enough, looked enough. I think it went in after the reflection. Right, Mike. In, yeah. uh, what do you think did the inexperienced beat a skid, Mike, to yes. a certain extent? I know you were the better team, but yes, had a lot I of so. in the first final in that. Yes, maybe. No, all right. But they put up a good show now, I really give it to give it a hand it down to a skid, and they put up a great show. Yeah. And they give us a great fight of it. Um, our penalty save, uh, their penalty save blow, I think, was Johnny Fitzgibbon. That, right, that was right, a common right. point as well now. But overall, I'm, I'm absolutely... Your half back then was very good, Mike. Brilliant, brilliant. They've been playing very well all year. Yeah, they are. Playing brilliant now, really yeah, and truly. Definitely. And delighted. You have a great week in Atlanta. We will, we will. Uh, everywhere, everywhere. Thanks Probably very much. Mike Minehan, the daddy of the team. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bye, Mike. Try it, Here now we have Dick Costello, Mr. Holling, as far as we are concerned, in a skate. And Dick, it wasn't to be your day. No, not today, not today. We, what we made, I suppose, much physical, stronger team, more determined, stagey team. You know, they were there. They were there for the last three years coming. They didn't make it, but I suppose give them credit. They did it on the day. Oh, for all that, I said to the credit to the bunch of 20. I just said 20. They came from match to match. That was their only train they ever had. But they carried on, got to the county final, and I think they're delighted to be there. And hopefully, with the few young lads coming up, that we'll, we'll be there or there about the next few years. Dick, and I think everybody i kind of sorry for a skate in the season, but as you said yourself, Drummond uh, had that little bit of sharpness had, yeah. and experience. Yeah, they had, that's true, that's true. They, they, were, they had more experience on the day. Like. One consolation, Dick, for you, I suppose, all the good work you've been with the young fellas down the years, it's finally coming through. Yes, it's coming. Small bit. Thanks Small very bit. much, Dick. Thank you, thank you. We have Pat Cagney, the man behind the condition yeah. of the Ballangari pitch today. Pat, you had everything in perfect condition. Things went according to plan for you. I had the day, John, yeah, but you know, I went down my own, there was a good bunch of lads there like, to give us a hint for the last week. See, we had more time because we only knew less than they liked it. Well, the final was going to be on here. But uh, everyone looked at the weather and everything went out all right, like, worked yeah. out all right. You had everything in perfect order anyway, Pat. Yeah. The grass was cut, the field was iron, and you had this golden circle where an <laughs> athletic club should take a, a bit of notice of that and make sure that it happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but as I said before, John, like, there's a good bunch of lads there. That is it the the week when we went to them. Like, we were around. here yesterday, Pat. We were all here with your troops. That's right. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll the here yesterday. That's Thanks right. very much, Pat. All right, John. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Neely. <laughs> Neely, come here. <laughs> Neely McAuliffe here. Neely, we were up in at Lekka yesterday, we met you, and you were a bit That's shy right. yesterday. That's you right. said you'd wait until today, Neely. Well, you have to wait as spot as it's on the scoreboard. You never know on the day with two teams. I, I quite, I, I might be wise after the match. I quietly fancied us. I thought we would win, but you never know when it comes down to the wire. I think the lead we got it built up in the first half uh, paid dividends in the end. Uh, I had no doubt we were the better team, but we had to shorten the scoreboard, and I think we got a great start, and we should be damned glad for that. Uh, well, you're looking forward to yeah. the intermediate. We are, we are, yeah. right, another year. Fran, come in. We presented that for us there a minute ago. We'll bring it out again. Get him out again. Chairman of Drummond at Lacker, Mike, first year as chairman. Fantastic, uh, Giant, it's fantastic. A wonderful result from here. As, as you say, I've been chairman for the first time. To win a county is fabulous. It's great there. Yes, yeah. you, were, you were the better team, Mike. Yeah, uh, we took the game to ice skating from the very start. And I tried to win and in the losing again was in the first 10 minutes when we got two or three fast goals. And uh, the, there was no way back, I tried in for ice skating, you know. Mm -hmm. But they battled in the second half, they played well and they, 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 they'll be there. They'll be there next year. Help uh, with the help of God. Is, help um, of is, is Eddie around? We might have a word with him. Eddie Valley. Eddie Pendleton. Chairman of it, Drummond at Lacquer to the chairman of ice skating. Fancy, you're a little bit disappointed. Yeah, it was a great day for the club. It was a great day for the club, we were, we were glad to get there, but on the day, we didn't perform, John, on the day, we didn't hurdle. Drummond and Lacker got off to a good start, and it set them in motion. They hurdled after once, once they got the goal in the point, the first couple of minutes, it, it, it was, you know, it, 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 it cooled them down. We didn't get the scores that we, should, we, we wanted. We missed the pin, we got a couple of points. If we may have scored a penalty, we might have just come back into it. We didn't. They played better on the day, much better than us, and uh, I wish them the best to look, and uh, I wish them... Every success in, in the Intermediate Championship. And we know you mean that, Francis. Johnny Fitz, an outstanding sportsman, captain of a skating. Johnny, I know you're disappointed, but there'll be other days. 
well done, like, you know, we tried our best today, like, them t- that side they were played today, they've been trying for the last three or four years to win a county, like, we come up one year from Jonah B, come up to play this standard, like, you know, we never played this standard before, all the boys are young, like, we're very young, the average age of our team, let's say, is leaving out Finty Ryan, is about 20, something like 21, and Dick Costello is bringing all young hurlers up, we're not down, like, over losing this, like, it's great to get to county final, no? we won the West Championship, like, as Keaton win the West Championship, win out of the blue, yeah. team out of the blue, I wouldn't say we're down, down, because I, I think in the next few years, we, 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 in hurling, we'll become a real force, I think, actually, the football is going to be taken off and beaten from the hurling because there's great interest in the skating in hurling. Look at the sport we had today. We outnumbered that team there by two to one. It's great to get the sport. So hopefully, like you know, they got three goals in the first half. You know, well, some say my soft. I wouldn't put any fault in any of the boys. It just happened, you know. So like that killed us really. Like, you know, we tried our best to think that, but we're just looking for pride in the second half. You know. So, well done, then. In that speech, what do you have a TD? Well done, Monty Hollow. Eddie. You had them flying today, Eddie. Well, there was a great commitment, John, over the past three months. You know, we didn't seem to get together against Coombe there. You know, we were, we were, I thought we were the better team against Coombe. But on the day, we didn't seem to put it together. We got our chances, we didn't take them. But today, we took them, you know, at the very start. And that was the, the word going out of the dressing room, that we had to take our chances against that skate, which are always very tough. You know, as the fellas as I played enough for football against the Christians <laughs> in my day. You know, Indeed, you know, Eddie. You know, I will tell you, your half back then was very good. Brilliant, you know, John Fitzgibbon was, was, out, was outstanding, like, for the first 20 minutes, and I thought, you see, he was the one man that brought the heart in SP, in you know, and John, 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 Johnny Buckley and, and Marty, like, are great, great lads, you know, they never give in, like, you know. And what can we say about the man from Uncle, Mike, about well, the left well, corner well, well, Mike, great Mike. commitment, like, from Eddie Barry himself, like, Richard. All, uh, th- this was their last chance for the county medal, and the young fella said that they were going to go out and win that for them, you know, and they've done a great, they, well, they played a big part in it themselves as well, you know. So. And the, the three Van Oglands were a big backup team. Oh, great, 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 great. It was a great commitment. I think it was the first dressing room I, I, I was ever in for three months that one player never opened, never back answered to, to us, like, you know, there was a commitment there from the word go, like, you know, it's a very easy team to get on with. And you'll stick with him for next year, Eddie, for the intermediate. Well, well, we'll talk about that. I'm, I'm not getting any younger now. Of course they'll want you, Eddie. We know they'll want you. I'm not getting any younger now. Fellas like you were scarce, Eddie. Thanks very much, Eddie, and well done. Thanks, John. Father, Johnny Daly, is that's this? Right, Jeff, and a lacquer man. A lacquer, that's right. Put bait in the city. That's right, Jeff. Put your right. heart went back to a lacquer today. That's very much, yeah. Great and victory. For the very good, yeah. It was a very good hauling game, you know, and they were, they were that big quick. They got a very, the, the start you'd like, and I think, the team complement each other very well. I think the experienced players gave leadership, and I think the, the, young, the, the younger players they use their energy and their fee they, in their pace to great effect. I think the first goal, the second goal was Morgan. Well, the first goal, Morgan Walsh's goal, I think, was a play where Eddie Walsh made the opening. Mike Miner had had the place exposed, had his man taken out, and Morgan had ran into space. And I think it just showed the older players stabilised the thing any time that we were like at lack of a lot likely to be caught, to be come at, you know, and I think every fellow played a very, very honest display. They, they took the knocks that you need to win a county title. I think a team that doesn't come off without a few knocks hasn't competed fully. And I think today they were, they were prepared to put their, put their head in the block for, for the title. I think fair play to a skate in their first year up. It's very hard to come from another grade to another in the final year. To get the final, I think, is a great plus. And I think they will come away from today a much more experienced side. They won't always meet a team as well equipped as it lacked. A lot of very experienced players and talented younger players. And I think they both trumped each other well. I think very full credit to the selectors and Freddie Pinderville. They brought their team out very well. They brought out the various strengths of the team. And I think it was a very, very good unit that they skated at the face. And I would say to them is, keep at it, you know, that they won't have to play. They won't meet a stronger junior team in a good while again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Father. And here we have now the man of the match on the Eskiton side, Pa Rocky Ruttle, son of the great late John Ruttle, being presented with the man of the match by Tom Corrigan. Well done, Rock. You're a bit disappointed, Pat, but oh, yeah. you'll come again. Oh, yeah, hopefully we'll be back next year. We've had a good year anyway, so we can't really complain. It's a fair achievement, like, to win the West. Better than we really hoped, I suppose, but... Uh, it's disappointing in the day, all right. So uh, hopefully we'll be back next year. The fearless Rocky Ruffin. Thank you very much, Rock. <laughs> Father O'Gorman here, a great old friend of West Limerick, but Father, we know that your allegiance had to switch towards the South team today, and we don't begrudge you that at all. Listen, you enjoyed the match. It was a good match. And good the best team won. Oh, and the day, and the day. Actually. Nice match. It was in two series. The a bit of a scuffle, no, 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 no. Men's no. game. Men's game, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it was. Yeah, it was had uh, five or six individuals right. who were a bit above everybody else. And of course, the first Jonah, 
Right. Very hard championship to win. Very hard. Very hard. hard. And the skaters will keep at it. They'll, they'll turn and come to. Thanks very much, Father. Right. Thanks very much. All Ireland medal winner with Limerick 1957 with the bet in right and that's right, that's right. John Barry from Palace Henry. John's right. nephew's up playing here today. You know that, did you? I know that. You were a bit too good on the day. We were, we were, we had a uh, better balanced team all round. Uh, what did I say about it? Uh, Jimmy Lynch was brilliant in goals. Has been our, one of our most consistent players down the year. Uh, uh, we had a good game last Sunday with Napierce and came on and after that from us again. Made an awful difference for us today. Took our chances. We had four or five up at half time and I thought that was the difference that we had a we had a we had a skate and killed off at that stage. Uh, that's my that was my reading of it, John. Well done, yeah. John. Thanks very okay, much. Right. Hey, Donald, proud day for you, ex chairman of the club. Ex chairman John. And is this This is my daughter Ashley. Good. Beautiful. Nine, nine months old. So first nine count, months first old. First final. First count. She brought long, you look. We were a long time waiting for people to come today and the players work very hard. Everyone in a small club. We're the latest. Thanks right. very much. Thanks, John. Great. Dermot Gallagher here, uh, Assistant Secretary, would we say, Dermot? That's right, yes, Of John. the uh, skating club. That's right, John, yes. I, one thing I noticed about the skating, they are not too disappointed. I think that they're happy that it's such a fantastic year. Yeah, I think that, that that's true, John. You know, uh, skating uh, started out at the start of the year. Uh, they decided to go to Junior A, and uh, some of us in the club were probably a little bit worried, like, that they might be biting off more than they could chew. But, I mean, they have proved us wrong and they have won 10 games on the trot and, OK, they got to the county final. Their aim was to win the West final. That they did. Uh, they carried on and they got to the final here today. And, OK, on the day, things didn't go right. They played second best at Drummond at like a right through. And, you know, that's why the lads, I think, at this stage, they have their heads, heads held high and uh, they're going home uh, feeling that they have a job well done, you know. Thanks very much, Thomas. Thanks. Paddy McAuliffe, publican, Shanachie. Paddy, you're a happy man today for well, the neighbouring parish. Well, I played for someone that lacked for the best part of 30 years, and I'd have to be a happy man. I'd know all the lads and everything. They played great on the day, they played great, you know. And I suppose the few better players that they had with the senior hurling experience through the years and the third underage and junior with Limerick, that they made a difference on the day, you know. Okay. John like, Fitzgibbon has no second Well, he post had, yeah. But John Fitzgibbon was in the Limerick panel last year, like as late as last year when they won in All Ireland, you know? That's right, that's and right. I mean, you have him back dancing for back in the junior team, it make a most awful difference, John. Oh, that's true, Joe. No? And Paddy, even though that it was a bit one sided in the finish, you know, there was still great how the crowd stayed on to the finish. Oh, well, indeed, yeah. I, I no. suppose there's great credit due to Askit, and they came up from Junior Bay to reach a county final the following year, and that, that's big talk. And, Traditionally, I always thought as Kate was a football outfit, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, and I, I suppose that surprised everybody by going to a county final, and it's very hard to win the West. With all it's, the teams from the West, Dana Valangari, Nakadera, Kaliri, all those teams, it's all true. with it's a traditional hurling, you know. And he knows, Paddy, how the well go on? The well won anyway. Did they win? They won, the well won, yeah. And the D. Kylie's goalkeeper oh, was drumming it like a gym we were in it like yesterday, and... We met your mother and your father and she sang a beautiful ballad about Drummond Akaka, written by your father, and you come here today and turned in the display of your life. Thank you, sir. You're a happy man. I'm very happy, very happy. Not for me, but for the whole team. The whole team has had to play great. All the lads. Just for the last, say, four or five years, they're together, you know. Ben all joined us and great display at them. Great display. We should have won it last year and the before as well, but we threw it away, so we're lucky this year. Lucky. We were lucky as well today, like, you know. You had more experience in the skating, Jim. You won the last count, three counties during the Real League. Oh, we had, yeah. Oh, we had, yeah. But um, the championship always seemed to let us down, you know. But this year, thanks to the guys, you know, we've done us, you know. It's given John was the big backup here, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great, great to see him back. Thanks, Jimmy. Great we might see you in it like a during the week. With the help of God. Come on, anytime. anytime. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you very Here we have John Buckley, the real captain of Drummond at Lacken. Now, John didn't receive the cup today from the county chairman because, unfortunately, a few minutes from the end, the switches and Todd, John might have overstepped his authority, but there was nothing at all in it. But John, push. anyway, was, 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 was put to the sideline, and the rule is that you can't accept the cup. But, John, I know that uh, the lads accepted it for you, anyway. That's it. Did it, yeah. Well, we're a team. It's all a team unit at the end of the day, and it doesn't matter really who's captain, just as someone accepts it. Because it's all one man, it's a 15 man effort and the subs. That's what all boils out at the end of the day. Like, yeah. We described you, John, like an American footballer. You had the fun facial helmet, you had 
You know, you, you, you had a lot of gear in your John. Would it held you together? I have loose bones, and, <laughs> and you, need, you need a bit of support when you're... You do, you do, John. But uh, it worked anyway at the end of the day, we won, and that's about it. And the main thing is the couple being in Buckley's house tonight? Couple being in Buckley's house tonight. And for the next 12 months? The next 12 months, hopefully. Well done, John. We'll we hope you have a great year. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Thanks very much, John. And so we come to the end of the 1995 Junior A Hurling Championship here, played where Drummond Atlaka defeated Askeaton. I suppose a fairly easy enough victory in the end for Drummond Atlaka. We'd like to thank the people from Askeaton who cooperated with us for making this video and for the people of Drummond Atlaka who we visited yesterday. So I suppose there's no more for us to say, only just to tell you that we hope where there's exiles from Eskiden or Atlaka in any part of the world that they will get to see this video. Basically, as Dan said, we're kind of, um, we're targeting the American and the English market with this video. So from Ballingarry, this is John Carrick, Dan Sheehan, Sandra Sheehan and Joe Carrick signing you off. Paramila Mahogun.